Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Jim Mayo Memorial Stadium here on the campus of Fairland High School in Proctorville, Ohio. I'm Jack Harris, along with Dave Carroll, and we're going to bring you the second-round playoff game in the Ohio State football playoffs between the homestanding Fairland Dragons and the visitors from Worthington, Worthington Christian Warriors. The Warriors come in under the direction of Jeff Hardings, the head coach, and a program that's only been um, – has only started since 2014, but they come in with an 8-2 record and a uh, upset in the first round of the African Centric uh, in Columbus. First time in the playoffs for them. First time in the playoffs for them. Coach, tell us a little bit about the Warriors. Well, I'll be honest with you, Coach. I've tried to find out stuff all week, and I have. One for Tim Stevens, I wouldn't have a whole lot. I'm going to be honest with you. He, he helped us out here. Uh, like you said, the Warriors, they're 8-2. Uh, and two. They're four and one in their league. Now they play in the Mid-State Cardinal Conference. Um, I'll give you a rundown. They're three and one at home. They were five and one away. The first game was, and I think they had a couple COVID games that got canceled, so they had to find people to play them. So they beat Southeastern Local 21-14. They beat Dayton Christian 6-0. They beat Miami Valley Christian Academy 30-6. They beat uh, Fisher Catholic, which we played before here. They beat them 31-7. Wow. Um, that was a conference game, too. They beat Lima Central Catholic. I'm sorry, they lost to Lima Central Catholic 50-3. So they took a spanking there. Uh, the next week they won. They beat Fairfield Christian Academy. That was a conference game. They lost to Burn Union, 40 to 14. That was a conference game. They played Bishop Rosecrans. They won that game, 50 to 20. That was a conference game. And then they played Grove City Christian. They won that one, 70 to 49, and that was a conference game. And then last week uh, in the playoffs they beat Afrocentric. Uh, I can't ever say Afrocentric out of Columbus. They beat them. Uh, 23 to 12. So they are, I mean, we don't know a whole lot about them. I can, I, we'll talk about a couple of players here real quick for the national anthem, but the quarterback is Hobie Rakes. He's passed for over a thousand yards. They have a wide receiver that's also a really good basketball player, uh, Correll Amsball, 30 catches for 500 plus yards. Another wide receiver, Sam Dunson, 25 catches for 250 yards. Another wide receiver, uh, Elijah Ault. Okay, we're going to take Paul's here for the National Anthem. prayer. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for all the blessings of life you love to have, Lord. We thank you for all these ball players and all the, people, the fans and everyone who's here tonight. And we ask that you put your hand of protection and safety around them all, band members, directors, assistant coaches, officials, and may they have a good game tonight, Lord. And Lord, we just uh, praise your name and thank you for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, Coach, let's finish out. I've got Ethan Albert and Tyler White are the running backs. 
Uh, Luke Zodi and Luke Snedeker, I believe, are the couple that are two good linemen. And they got a really good kicker, uh, Grant Woodfin. We saw him out here kicking before the game. Yeah, he, he didn't miss a one. He started out uh, close like an extra point, then he went back five, and he went all the way back to the 30-yard line, which would be a 40-yard field goal, and he made them all. So they do have some talent. A little bit about their head coach, Jeff Hardings. Some of you may recognize that name. Jeff Hardings played for Penn State Nittany Lions, and he also played for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I'm talking with their uh, stat man, to try to get the pronunciation right of all these names. Uh, he told me that he was just the kind of guy you'd want your kid to play for. He's got nobody involved in this program, no no kids, uh, grandkids or anything like that, but said he's a very patient man. And I think when you're starting a program, they've only been alive for seven years, this program, the football program. And like you said, their basketball team was just fantastic last year. And... Uh, I see some talent out there, Coach. I uh, was watching uh, warm-ups, and the quarterback can wing it. And he's not a real big fella. He's only five foot uh, nine. Yeah, but Coach, he, Hobie releases, he re releases that ball quick, and he can wind it up quick. But he Got put together. Release. He weighs 191 pounds. Yeah, he's he looked good to me. Yes, that he's, receiver uh, out there looked good throwing. And he's just a sophomore. He's just a sophomore. So I think. Uh, uh, Oh, I want to talk about the uh, weather and the field conditions. We talked about it so much last week. Oh, my goodness. It's 51 degrees outside. It's uh, better weather than uh, Myrtle Beach today. And by the way, I'm, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> I'm glad I made it because I wasn't going to play in that stuff. 40-some degrees, windy and rainy, 94% chance. So we, uh, we decided to leave early, come home, and enjoy the ball game. Field conditions, you'll see it out there. There are a few uh, bare spots, but it's dirt. It's not mud. I think it's going to be a fast fast game tonight. I yes, mean, there is, I, it is a fast I mean track that, out folks, there. It's, it's not going to be all this slipping and sliding and slopping around in the soup we had and last week. And we're going to probably be able to recognize some numbers tonight. <laughs> well, and you know what? we got to explain to people at home. you got two old dudes up here. <laughs> That don't that don't have a don't we don't have a feed from the TV so we don't get the good close ups you guys get at home, right? So we're sitting here, uh, and, and I apologize to, to everyone that was involved in that game last week. I know there were times I said the wrong player from Fairland, and I know I said the wrong player from, from my the Warriors. Where were they from? <laughs> <laughs> oh my, the, the team we played last week. We're playing Warriors again this week, but uh, that that. That right there should tell you what you're dealing with. Well, I can't remember what the name of the team we played last week. But um, I, I look for a, another tough ball game. We were in the second round. These teams didn't get here uh, by accident. I mean, they got an 8-2 and two record, and uh, the Dragons are 9-1. And, one. and uh, they, they've got a lot of weapons too, Coach. I'm, I'm telling you, you talk about J.D. Brumfield and Peyton Jackson in the backfield, but you've got to deal with uh, one Cam Kitts and Xander Schmidt, Mr. Do-Everything. they got a good field goal kicker and Alex Bruce. And uh, the Dragons line is just outstanding. You know, we could talk about Hudson, uh, Casey Hudson, uh, Mason Ward, J.R. Ward, Alec DeMint. Those guys, and I did notice that the Dragons had about five guys on the sideline that are hurt and won't be in the game tonight. And uh, Well, you know, I want to say this, too. I didn't see any walking wounded over on the other side there, and I think they only have 30 or 29 so. players. 29. I counted 29 okay. players. And Ethan it, Stewart's still out. Dylan Stone's still out. Quentin Clemine, Zach Stepp. Uh, so the Dragons, uh, it's the next man up syndrome for those guys, and, and they did a fantastic job last week. So uh, we're about seven minutes away from uh, kickoff. I don't know how that happened. I thought we started. <laughs> They've re restarted the clock on us. So, uh, Well, you know what? Then let's, let's do this. Let's get some shout-outs. I got a couple, and then I'll let you give some. All right, go ahead. So first shout-out, I want to give us to Alec Bruce, the kicker. Today is his birthday all right happy birthday alex. so alec here's your shout out i want that snickers bar on monday uh, <laughs> <laughs> um also let's see here 
I got a funny one for you. I got this girl in class. Her name is Abby Roberts. I call her Abigail. Is one of the quietest, shyest kids you'd ever want to meet. Well, you know what I found out this week? Apparently, she's the beast in the student section. Oh. She's the beast. She oh. came, she said, did you see what those referees did last week? <laughs> she's a weekend warrior, is she? <laughs> Apparently, she is. And Quiet I as didn't a mouse in class and uh, cuts it loose on oh, the weekend. Oh, and I just, I just, I had a good laugh about that. I thought that was good. That was that was really a good. Also, I'm going to give a shout out to uh, Scott Wilson and Carl Bowen. I was supposed to go down and hang around the beach this week with them, and they didn't they didn't go. And I didn't know it. I had dinner with them last night. I said, "Why didn't you guys go?" And they said, "Well, you couldn't go with us." And I said, "Oh, okay." So well, I tell you, you didn't want to be there today. Well, and, I'm, uh, you know. I good, think it's supposed to be nice hey, next week. The good Lord is uh, good to us because you know what? The weather down there is supposed to be terrible. It is. And we'd have been sitting down there in the rain. And Oh, no. that's. That was, I got a shout out to my two golf buddies that I just uh, brought me home today. Dave Arthur from Ashland, Kentucky. He and I coached together about nine years down there. And uh, he whooped up on off <laughs> us Ohio <laughs> boys. And uh, Glenn Ward from down Chesapeake. Glenn's a fair boy. And uh, he got whooped up on by everybody. So <laughs> I couldn't pass that chance. Uh, Glenn's a good friend, and uh, I had a good time in the three days that we were there. We were supposed to stay four days, but uh, the weather did not cooperate, so I thought, well, let's head home and watch the Dragons play. Well, it was going to be uh, Ricky Schiffko and myself here tonight, and then when you called me and said, hey, I'm coming back, I was like, Okay, good. Right. That means I don't have to do play-by-play. Right. -play. That's a lot better. Right. See you, Lonnie. Boy, the field conditions, though, Coach, they're just, they've done a great job this week getting this thing ready. Uh, just tremendous. And, and thank the good, good Lord we didn't have any rain. Right. I mean, it's it looks like and it's drained really good. There's a couple little uh, Across places, the bridge, it was 60 degrees. I thought, Lordy, it was like 40 and windy and rainy <laughs> down there. I thought, Good decision. How was it home. coming over the mountains in West Virginia? Absolutely gorgeous. I'll man. bet. All I'll the bet. trees, the golds, the reds. The, oh, I mean, it was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. You know, my favorite place to go look at the hills is when you're going through Virginia and where the shot tower's at, and you come across the New River, and you can see all those trees in the back through yes, there. Yes, right. And now uh, when you're approaching uh, Big Walker Mountain yep. Tunnel, and that mountain all the way across there it was just absolutely gorgeous and uh, it was a good trip we made pretty good time we left about eight this morning and got here about 4 15 4 20 and uh, did pegster have you something to eat uh no <laughs> Peggy, Peggy, she didn't know Peggy. what time. She didn't know what time we was getting here. Well, you but, should have uh, communicated with her. Well, uh, my phone died, <laughs> and uh, I forgot to bring her with me. So, anybody that uh, wants to communicate with me, you're gonna have to do it through David. Here, I'm. Uh, you know, I'm an old man. That's all I can say. <laughs> but uh, I'm glad to be here, and uh, now the teams are coming out, and about three minutes to go until the kickoff. As far as the kickoff, the uh, Warriors, the Warriors and Christian Warriors, did win the toss and elected to defer to the second half. So Fairland will be receiving the opening kickoff, and the Warriors will probably kick it from the south end to the north end. Go ahead. Uh, yep. Twenty-two. Thank you for that. Okay, we're talking with uh, uh, Stat Man from the Worthington Christian Warriors, and he's he's gone from a that. he's gone from a lineman to a back. Yes, six one, two hundred seven pound uh, junior. Had him down here at offensive uh, line and linebacker, but he's gone. I'd say he's probably going to play fullback coach or some kind of blocking uh, back, I'd but they so have too. switched his number. He was number uh, 50. 50, and now he's number 22. Uh, we do have one more shout-out we forgot. Sure. You know Issa Talaferro, her younger brother, Crew, is Yeah, eight today. birthday. Yeah. Yeah, happy birthday, Crew. Got to get you there and say hello to Brad. Boy, he's a good-looking young man. Brad and Ashley. 
And for you folks at home, we are fighting the demolition derby next door. Yes, tonight, Coach. I, uh, I hope that doesn't interfere too much. I, I don't hear it, but I've got these headphones on, so. Uh, now we're waiting for the Dragons to take the field. There's still about two minutes to go on the clock, and their coaches are starting down the sideline, so they must be getting ready to hit the field. Um, the pencil do. Okay, the Dragons now coming out. And we're going to have the kickoff here in about a minute. I just got a message from one of your former players, one of the guys I coach with, J.D. Dinwiddie. J.D., how are you doing down there? Is and I haven't heard how his team's doing this year. Yeah, really come on, J.D., J.D., send in. me some updates on it. I'm glad you're listening. Had a lot of fun with him back in the day. Oh, he was a good lineman for us. Good kid. Yeah, he's a good coach. His mom and dad, good people. Brother Chris played basketball. And his uh, sister Jamie was a fine basketball player. I Played for sure. you, didn't she? Yes, fantastic. Well, she's married to Joey Thacker. And they've yes, got a, Jerry. They've got a, some kids. Are really athletic. I think oh, they're all one of his kid. Uh, yeah, he's going to play. Uh, he's got some offers to play somewhere, and I can't remember where it's at right off the bat. I know that Joey played at Liberty. Well, I'm sure somebody will tell us. Yeah, they'll That's fill all us good. in. Okay. The teams are on the field. Setting the ball down for the Worthington Christian Warriors is Grant Woodfin. He's the kicker. He's 5'8", weighs 150 pounds. And he is a senior. And I don't know that uh, the Dragons are deep enough. Back deep is... That's uh, Xander Schmidt, I believe. And ready for the onside. Now they back it up. And going back with Xander is number one, Cam Kitts. There's the whistle, and here's the kick. He boots it, and it's like a... Oh, and he tried to onside, tried to squib kick, but it was taken in there. By number 10, Bryson Hunt, he comes up with it and he returns it a couple of yards. The Dragons are going to start out in pretty good field position. The ball, it will start on the 36-yard line. I'll make it, yes, the 36. First down, 10 yards to go for the Dragons. That's good coaching by Worthington Christian because I wouldn't kick to either two of them guys either. <laughs> really, I think they've seen enough film. The Dragons come out and twin receivers rights. Xander Smith and Cam Kitts, two backs in the backfield. Jackson in the shotgun, he hands to Brumfield. He hits it up in there, and they've got a fumble. There's a fumble on the play, and Worthington Christian has recovered, but there is a flag on the play. So there's a quick turnover. The Dragons turn it over. The flag. That wasn't a flag. That was the uh, beanbag that they throw during a fumble, and it's orange. And we're going to have to – I wish they'd change that to red or blue. Anyway, Worthington Christie's got the ball in plus territory at the Dragons' 38-yard line. And the Dragons turn it over. Early opportunity for the Warriors. They come out and – Twin receivers to the left, one split to the right. And Hobie Rakes takes the handoff, hands to number 22. And he is brought down 
Number 22, that's the, the new number, isn't it? I believe it jo is. Joshua Carroll. Joshua Carroll is a 6'1", 207-pound junior. Coach Harding sends the play in with Hobie Rakes. Coach, you've got to be a pretty athletic kid to go from playing offensive lineman to, to running back. To running back. And this time it's number 16 in the backfield alongside Rakes. Twin receivers to the right, a wing right, a split right. He passes, zips it to number, I think that was number three, Elijah Alt on the reception for the Warriors. Gain of about three. It's going to bring up third down and five for the Warriors. Ball sitting on the 33-yard line of the Dragons. Warriors break the huddle, and they come out this time and trip receivers to the left and one to the right. And the shotgun. Ethan Albert take the handoff. We got a flag. He zips it down, and it's knocked away by Steeler Elite, number 27 for got the Dragons. Flag down. And there is some laundry on the field. They've got a sideline warning against... That will not cost them any yardage, but it is a warning. But it's going to bring up fourth down and five, and I think they're in uh, what you call four down territory, Lord. Uh, Coach, four down territory, ball resting on the 33-yard line, and it looks like they are going to go for it. Coach Harding. Sends the play in with Hobie Rakes, the quarterback. He comes to the huddle. And they're going to come out in twins right, or twins left, wing right, and a split right. Rakes in the shotgun. To his left, number 13, he fakes a handoff. He steps up, and he's going to be tackled right at the line of scrimmage. And the Dragons are going to take over on downs. I think it was R.J. Ward on the tackle for the Dragons. And I could be wrong. <laughs> anyway, nice play. And nice defensive stand I, right there. I, that was a good defensive stand and a good call by the offense. I believe I would have went for it, too, there at the 33. No, I know you would have went for it right there. <laughs> <laughs> you okay, are the gambler. Dragons are going to come out and twins right and split left. Oh, excuse me, trips right. Andrew Smith. Jackson in the shotgun, takes it, drops back, throws a screen pass out to Brumfield. He's got some room. He's got the first down and about 10 or 11, 12 more for the Dragons. Takes it all the way down to the 45-yard line of the Worthington Christian Warriors. The Dragons are in the hurry-up mode. They come out, and they're still in trips right and split left. Jackson in the shotgun, takes it. Rolls to his right. He looks. He's got Steeler leap. And Steeler is gone. Down the sideline. Peyton Jackson zipped one out there to Steeler. And they did not have the angle, correct angle, Coach. And Steeler well, cruises was, on into the open. Zone. I think that's a busted coverage. Well, there was only one out there, but I saw two receivers. That's what I'm saying. I had to be a busted coverage. So the Dragons are quickly on the board with 9.55 to go in the first quarter. Alex Bruce on for the extra point. Now, the officials have thrown a flag. I don't know what this is. And either they lined up off sides or... No, it's a legal procedure against the Dragons. So that's going to back it up five. And this attempt will be from the 15, making it a 25-yard extra point attempt. Bryson Hunt, the holder. Peyton Jackson's the snapper. There's a snap. It's good. Hold is down, and the kick is good. And the Dragons, with 9.55 to go in the first quarter, take a seven-zip lead 
Dragons seven, Worthington Christian zero. That's good. Oh, by the way, I just got a, JD just texted me, and he told me that this year he started five sophomores and four freshmen wow. on his varsity football team. That's the way you do it, JD. That's got to rebuild it, brother. Take your lumps and then start, you know, pay them, pay them back. Right. <laughs> You can kick butt later and take names and really don't care if you take get their names. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> All right, the Dragons are going to kick off now after a about a 10-yard reception from uh, Peyton Jackson to Steeler Leap, and then he turned it on down the sidelines and went in untouched for the Dragons. Alex Bruce on to kick off for the Dragons. I'd be anxious to see if we kick to their two deep guys. Back deep is number 15. That is Zach Kirkley. That's uh, 16, Coach. That's that good receiver, Adam Dunson. He's going to kick and it And he to kicks him. it deep. Dunson takes it just inside the five. He turns it up on the right sideline. He's got some room. And he is taken down around the 42-yard line. Nice return. A nice return by Adam Dunston. Dunson. He's a wide receiver. He's 5'10. He weighs 165 pounds. And a nice job. Hit the crease, and uh, Dragons got him down at about the 42. So, Worthington Christian will get their second possession of the quarter. They come out in twins left with Correll Ann's ball. And Ethan Albert, he's going to zip one out there, and it's too far, too wide for number three. That's Elijah Alt. <laughs> Good to see you, J.D. Dinwiddie. Thanks for the message. That brings up second down, 10 yards to go for the Warriors. They break the huddle. There's twins to the left, wing right with the wide receiver right. Breaks in the shotgun. He takes a snap, fakes the tailback, and zips one to number six. That's Correll Am's ball, and he's going to pick up about five on the play, and it's going to bring up third down and five yards to go, maybe a long four. Kid's got some good hands right there. Yeah, he does. You know what, Coach? I'm watching. They look like they're a really disciplined team. They really do. Well, you I mean, know just, this coach that they have has played in the NFL. You think he knows something. <laughs> Play for the Nittany Lions. And uh, here he's just a great guy for the job. You got seven on the clock. Okay, they come out, same set. Now they're going to go in motion. Timeout. And now their coach is going to call timeout. Play clock running down, and Coach Harding decides to take a timeout. So that's the first timeout of the half for the Warriors. Now, well, that's a good timeout, Coach, if you're going to Absolutely. risk getting a delay a game penalty and making it third and ten rather than a third and very manageable five. Yeah, he's got good field position right now. Right, he's at that. the 47-yard line. That makes your play call a lot easier, third and five as opposed to third and sure. ten. Sure, you're going to open the playbook up. we got a pretty nice little crowd here tonight on the home side. Yes. A dragon line, we've got Justin McKee and Casey Hudson. Uh, R.J. Ward. Looks like he's going to go to the 3-4, Coach. I don't know. I noticed he had three down linemen earlier. Got three down linemen, four linebackers, and four defensive backs. Now Zion Martin walks up on the left to make it a four. And Brumfield is... Oh, they got the man down the middle. That's number 22. 
Number 22, Joshua Carroll. 6'1", 207 pound uh, offensive lineman who has been transitioned to the backfield this week. Had a nice catch, good throw there by Hobie Rakes. A good pickup, and that's gonna be enough for the first down and more. Ball rested on the Dragons 28 yard line. Warriors in the huddle. Ham's ball goes right this time. And they got, they're gonna get, get they're gonna fake, keep, get the quarterback keep, and Casey Hutchinson said, no way. We're not having any of that. He wraps him up and slams him down for about a two yard loss. It'll be Zion Martin in on that tackle too, coach. Zion Martin also on the stop. Be second down and a long 11 yards to go. Let's call it 12. Ball sitting on the 30. Hands ball goes right again with. Elijah Alt. Rakes. Rakes a handoff. He's got the RPO. And he just throws it away. Number Smart 13, point. Elijah Albert was the intended receiver. And Rakes didn't see anything, so he just threw it in the dirt. I don't know if he could see over the guys coming at him, to be honest with you, Coach. Yeah, he's just 5'9". And he's a sophomore. He's just a youngster. So that's going to bring up third down and 12 for the Warriors. Coach, I noticed on their roster, they don't have a whole lot of seniors. They really don't. That's true. All right, trip receivers to the right this time. Rakes in the shotgun. The back to his right. He rolls right. Now he's going to throw deep down the middle. He's wide open, and he's got the score. That's... Correll Lamb's ball. He laid that ball right over the defensive back, and he pulls it in in the end zone for the score. That's a beautiful throw, a nice catch. Uh, we, we had nobody in the area code there. He's behind everybody. So 7.24 remaining in the first quarter, and the Warriors are on the board. In to kick, number 32, Grant Woodson. Snap and hold is good, and the kick is up, and he drills it right down the middle. Hobie Reigns is the, was the holder, and 7.24 to go. We got a tie game. It's knotted up at seven. Well, there's no cream puffs when you get into the playoffs, Coach. Oh, no. Very disciplined. I swear they, they they looked very disciplined. Didn't rattle. And you're right about this being a fast track. Oh, it's this field's quick tonight. The footing is good. Going back deep for the Dragons. I was going to let you know Schmidt, that Cam Kitts. Rena Allen just sent me a message and said that uh, Joey and Jamie's son's going to the Citadel the to Citadel. play basketball. So, Rena, thanks for that info. We appreciate it. Oh, another tried to pull a fast one, the Dragons there, broke the huddle, and the kicker approached the ball and kicked it right into the gut. Of, I think it was, uh, was that Garrett Spence that caught that ball? I didn't see the number, Coach. I don't know who that was. I know. It happened so fast. But the Dragons got excellent field position. They're at their own 46. Folks, and, if you're uh, out there watching and you haven't subscribed to our IT channel, Fairland IT, please subscribe and get us some more uh, – Subscribers, everybody, so we can get some more bandwidth from YouTube. Dragons, twins left, two backs in the backfield. He hands to Brumfield. He turns it up, and that's got him corralled for a one-yard loss. Flag. That's 
number 13, Ethan Albert, and we got a flag on the play. Just got to correct some from J.D. Foul. It's not the Citadel, it's VMI. <laughs> VMI, that's correct. All right, thank you, J.D. Appreciate it, Uncle J.D. There was a personal foul on the play. They grabbed the face mask. So the Dragons are going to get 15 yards and an automatic first down. 7-11 to go in the first quarter. Game tied 7-7. Dragons break the huddle. They're coming out with... Uh, Trip, trip receivers to the right. One receiver to the left. It's Cam Kitts on the left. Peyton Jackson in the shotgun. Brumfield beside him on his left. He throws a quick one out here to Xander Smith. He makes a move, and he's got the wheels, and he is going to go all the way into the end zone for the Dragons. The second touchdown. They found something. that They've hit on the right side twice, and Worthy Christian has failed to get there to make the tackle. They almost made a shoestring tackle, but Xander Smith was able to keep his feet and uh, – Hustle on in to the end zone. And that's going to put the Dragons up 13 to 7, 656 to go in the first quarter. Coach, we got the makings of a really fine ball game here. Yes, we do. I hope this is not like the Ashley Snap Russell game good. from last night. Hold is good and the kick is good. That thing was like 50 something to 40 something, like 53 to 49 or some kind of crazy score last night. 14-7. Your score, Dragons leading, 6.56 to go in the first quarter. Very exciting ball game thus far. A lot of action. Two pretty good quarterbacks, too. Uh, yes. I'll be anxious to see what we do to try to stop that Ams ball, Correll Ams ball. He's yes. getting out in front of us and getting behind us. And well, you can probably see that play again coach <laughs> I'd say we will back deep number 16 Adam Dunson Alex Bruce sets the ball on the tee and referee blows his whistle and we're ready for play Bruce approaches it, kicks it right down the middle again. This time, receiver on the right, number 13. Is it Ethan Albert? And he's corralled over there on about the 29, 30 yard line. Looks like it's going to be on the 30 yard line. So it'll be first and 10. Worthy to Coach, we've watched a lot of football year. That's the first wall I've seen set on a kickoff all year. Is that right? Well, this guy, you know, he's, he seems to know what he's doing. This time they're going to come out. Twin receivers to the left. Ham's ball. Out wide to the left. Brakes takes a snap. He's going to throw the slip screen out here to number 16, Adam Dunson. And number one, Cam Kitts. Slips behind the blocker and makes the tackle for about a half yard game. Ball resting on about the 31. That's It'll a nice play by Cam Kitts. Yes, very Fought nice. off the block of Am's ball and got right in there and made a good tackle. This time, Elijah Alt goes out wide right. Am's ball by himself over here on the left. Wing right and a slot right. He's looking, looking, looking. Now he throws deep. That's a bit of a, oh, they're going to call uh, pass interference on Steeler Leap. I Looks think like their they're... feet got tied up, Coach. I, I don't think both think of that them was... got tied up. That's a no call, but uh, I'm not officiating. I don't agree with that one. I don't usually <laughs> say that, but I don't agree with that one. I think their feet got caught together running down the field. That's just incidental contact right there. 
But the Dragons are going to be called for pass interference. It's going to be a 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. That's going to bring it out to about the 46. And now they're going to put it down on the 44-yard line. So it'll be first and 10, Worthington Christian. Ball resting on the 44-yard line. Come out. This time, Ann's ball goes wide right. They got a tight end to the left this time. They, run the, they fake the jet, hand to the tailback, and he's going to be met just past the line of scrimmage for about a half yard gain. That's number 22. Joshua Carroll on the carry. Good penetration by the defensive line right there. Right, and bring up second down, nine yards to go. And they haven't tried to run too much on this front four, four of uh, Fairland. Twins right, one receiver left with the wing left. Drake's in the shotgun, he's looking, looking, fakes. Now he's throwing the bomb down to Am's ball, he's got it, and he's in the end zone again for the Worthington Christian beautiful pass. touchdown. And Just I don't know how perfect. He, he that. dropped that thing down out of the clouds, and Am's ball, tremendous hands, reaches out, grabs it, and takes it in the end zone. That's going to make it 14 to 13 with 5.09 to go in the first quarter. Well. This could be a Russell Ashen game like last night because oh, it was just goodness. score, score, score. On for the extra point, Grant Woodford. Hold his down, kick his up, and it's good. And that's going to tie it up with 5.09 to go. And that's going to make the score 14 all. Coach, that was a beautiful pass. Right. Had, I mean, oh, he, he hit that kid in stride. He threw a rainbow that time. And uh, when I looked out there and saw it was number six, I thought, well, oh boy. they got a good chance of <laughs> catching this. Yeah, we're going to have to make some adjustments. Can't yeah, let that's that kid twice get he's us. got behind us. He's a very athletic wide receiver. That's Correll Amsball, a 6'4", 200-pound Junior, I think he. I think he was on the basketball team last year that beat us. That's what I've heard. Really fine looking athlete. On the kickoff, Grant Woodfin. This time looks like they might kick off. I think they have 12 players on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. There's 12 players on the field, coach, and nobody's counted. 12 players. Oh, there we go. Somebody's got to come out, gentlemen. So Adam Dunson, he comes out of the game. And now they have 11 on the field. Uh, they're going to back them up five for that illegal substitution. This time they'll be kicking off at the 35. Back deep, Xander Smith and Cam Kitts. And they're going to try to squib kick again, and it's going to go out of bounds. 
at about the 38-yard line, so that's going to give the Dragons the ball at the 40 if they still have that same rule. <laughs> yep. So the Dragons are going to get good, excellent field position again. Ball went out 38. They're going to lay it down at the 38? I, 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 I don't think that ball touched anybody, did it? It didn't. I don't think. Unless a Steeler, I believe, was the one over there. I don't think he touched it, did he? What are they doing? <laughs> oh, this is, they put it down at the 35. It went out at the 30. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Okay, I, I don't know. Might, does somebody have to explain that one to me. Dragons come out, twin receivers left. One receiver to the right, two backs. To the left of Jackson. He's going to keep it. Now he's going to run the RPO. He throws to Xander Smith. He stops. Boys one tackler. Turns it up, and he's going to go about six or seven on the play. Xander Smith on the reception from Peyton Jackson. And the Dragons are going to get a gain of five yards on the play. Ball will be second down and five. Ball at the 40. Nice little play. And Cam Kitts out wide to the left. Steeler Leap and Xander Smith wide right. Two backs in the backfield. Jackson. He takes a snap, and he's going to run to the right this time. He turns it up, and he's got room. Flag. And they got it. Got a hole. Oh, we got a flag on the play. And, and ball runs Jackson out of bounds down around the 15-yard line. And uh, they're going to call holding on the Dragons. So that's going to back them up 10. It's going to bring up second down and 15. Ball will be resting on the 30-yard line depending on where the hold took place because they marked that off from the spot of the foul. I don't know. We had two people there, Coach. I don't know who that who that was on. I do not know. That ball will rest on the 30-yard line. It'll be second down and 15. Coach, that we've will had this negate a fine game yep. by Peyton we've Jackson. We've had this discussion before. When you get in the playoffs, you can't have penalties. Right. We've got trips to the right. Wide receiver left. Brumfield offset to the right of Jackson, who's in the shotgun. He takes a snap. He's sprinting out to the right. And he avoids one tackle. But... And on the stop is Dalen Johnston, number 10. Finally wrapped up Jackson, and uh, somebody's down. I think it's a Worthington Christian player. That's number 15, Zach Kirkley. Let's hope he's okay. He's Yeah, I think he just took a hit in a bad spot. I'm going to say you're correct. So we got a timeout right now for an injured player. 4.50 to go in the first quarter. Man, it's been a long first quarter. It has, hasn't it? 14 14 is your score. Dragons got five yards on the play there by Peyton Jackson. Avoided one tackler. Coach, I was looking. We'll talk no, about No, that's number 45. Who is that? Tyler White. All right. Well, He's Tyler, we uh, hope you're you're okay. Yeah. 5'11", 170 pounds senior. One, two, three, four, five. You're right. They only have six seniors on their roster. Know. So you didn't have very many. Very Update, Co play. Coach Ironton's up 10 to nothing on Portsmouth. Thank second you. Second quarter. We'll get you all the updates as we get them. Dragons come out and trips to the left. One receiver right. 
Peyton Jackson in the shotgun. Takes a snap, and drops back, and it was intended for Xander Smith, but that's off the mark. And diving for an attempted interception was Ham's ball. Look at that ball got down. The Dragons are going to bring up uh, fourth down. They're going to send in the punting unit back to punt for the Dragons. Number eight, Xander Smith. One, two, three, four, five. And coach, penalties are drive killers. Penalties are drive One, killers. That's eight. They only have ten guys. Fairland finally turn, runs in another wide man to the right. There's the snap. There's the kick. And it's taking a line drive, and he slips and falls down. Number 13, Ethan Albert. Caught that low-line low drive kick from Xander Smith and went down immediately, lost his footing, and the ball will be on the 37-yard line. Pretty good field position for the Warriors. Not bad at all. 4.21 to go in the first quarter of a tie ball game, 14-14. Hobie Rakes. Breaks the huddle. We got twins right with the wing right and one receiver left. They run the jet sweep to Dodson. He slips and he was corralled in there. I think it was Casey Hudson wrapped him up and threw him down for a one-yard loss. It's going to bring up second down and 11 to go. That's a nice job by Casey setting the edge out there. Yes, sir. Two teams with really good speed and some very good skilled players. Yes, I'm telling you. Wide left this time. Alt. Ham's ball's wide to the right. They fake to the tailback. He throws a slant to Ham's ball, and that was overthrown. Man, he fires it out there, doesn't he? Yes, he does. I, I told you, he got that quick release. Yes, and he's got something on it. 3.36 to go. Third down. 11 yards to go. Ball sitting on the 36-yard line. They got to hurry. They're going to have to call another timeout. They're under 10 on the play clock. Yeah, they're, they're trying to hurry up. Twins right, one to the left. He's looking, throwing it. The in route, to number three, Elijah Alton. He's wrapped up there by number two, J.D. Brumfield, and number 10, Bryson Hunt. And a minimal gain of about four yards. Brings up fourth down, seven yards to go, and they're sending in the punting unit. In the punt, Christian Tucker. Uh, excuse me. Number 16, Adam Dunson. There's a snap. Kick is to the left, and it... Bounces out of bounds somewhere around the 30-yard line. It's going to be out at the 29. The Dragons will take over after forcing a punt. 2.47 to go in the quarter. Game tied up, 14 all. Peyton Jackson brings the play in from Coach Cunningham. Coach, you got an update. Fort Fry is up six to nothing on Nelsonville. Nelsonville? Nelsonville, York, yep. Dragons come out, twins right and twins left. 
Jackson in the shotgun. Offset to his left, J.D. Brumfield. Takes a snap, then run to option. Brumfield tries to get around the edge, and he's going to get about three. Pretty quick defense for the worthy Christian Warriors. He got there pretty quick. Yes, pretty quick. Second down, seven yards to go for the Dragons. Ball resting on the 33-yard line. Dragons come out and trips right. One receiver left. Jackson barks out the signals, takes a snap, and he runs a quick hitter to Xander Smith, and he's got enough for the first down. A little slant pattern by Xander Smith. Peyton Jackson laid it right on his numbers, and the Dragons are going to pick up a first down at the 43-yard line. And they come out in the hurry-up mode. Same set, trips right. One left. Right there, Obi. Coach Cunningham changes the play. And they're going to run a oh. quick one out there to uh, Cam Kitts, but uh, Peyton didn't have enough on it, and it skipped off the ground. Incomplete. And they'll bring up second down, 10 yards to go for the Dragons. Coach, I don't think he ever had a hold of the ball. I don't yeah, think he got like a grip on it. he had trouble it. getting a grip on it. Ball resting in the middle of the field at the 43. Trips to the left this time. One receiver right. Jackson takes a snap. They run a shovel pass, and it's not going anywhere. Number 75, Joshua Heredia Aguirre. Made a nice play. A 6'3", 225-pound sophomore. I'm going to tell you, they look well prepared for us. Yes, they, they really do. I can hear the coaches over here saying, this is what they're going to run. This is, you know, they're, they, they seem well prepared. They really do. Yes. Trips to the right. Jackson takes a snap, drops back, and they're going to air it out deep down the sideline, and it's overthrown intended for number 10, Bryson Hunt. So that's going to bring up fourth down and ten for the Dragons. And the Dragons sending in the punting unit. 57 seconds to go in the first quarter. On to punt, Xander Schmidt. Dragons in their wide right punt formation. Snap is good. There's the kick. And they're going to let that one go. And it's going to get a fairly bounce down inside the 10. It's going to rest at about the 7 or 8 yard line. Good punt. Good coverage. And the Dragons down the ball at about the 8 yard line. 45 seconds to go in the first quarter. Woo! Long quarter. Wow. We're going to be here a while. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> what else we got to do? Be first down and 10. Ball resting on the seven yard line. The Warriors come out and twins left. One receiver right with the wing left. Rakes, hands off. Number 22, Joshua Carroll. And he gets a minimal gain of about a yard. It's going to bring up second down, nine to go for the Warriors. I think they're going to let the quarter run out, Coach. Yeah, they're going to let the clock run down. And that's it. That's the end of the first quarter. 
which took one hour and, uh, <laughs> no, it took 40, 42 minutes, 42 minutes to play the first quarter. Gosh, if we were playing Colgrove that, and they had the ball, that would have been a half already. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got two teams that are, uh, they're pretty much pass happy. Uh, so it's going to be a, a long night as far as time. But they haven't run the ball much at all, maybe about yeah, we'll, five, six yeah, times. So the teams are going to switch ends of the field. Words and Christian is going to be down at about the eight or nine yard line, about the eight yard line. It's going to be up second down, nine yards to go. Uh, Dragons will take the south or the north end, excuse me, south end of the field. I see number 11, Cooper Cummings is back this week. Yep. Playing linebacker tonight. Right. He uh, was out last week with an injury. Worthington breaks the huddle. Twin receivers to the left with a wing right and a wide receiver right. Rakes in the shotgun. Takes a snap. He's looking. He fires a bullet that's intercepted by... Xander Smith, and he's got a pick six, Coach. He took that one right out of the air, threw it a little bit behind. Uh, and I don't think that quarterback saw Xander. He couldn't have. Cor Cor Carol Ham's ball was the intended receiver. They threw it a little behind him, and Z Xander was there. He picked it and returned it to the house. And the Dragons are going to go up 20 to 14 with 11.53 to go in the second quarter. And on to kick the extra point is Alex Bruce. Snaps good, the hold is down, the kick is up and it's good. And the Dragons lead 21-14. Well, that was a nice play, wasn't it? That was a big turnaround right there. Coach Buck Iron Portsmouth School? Well, I don't, I'm looking for updates. The last thing I had was 10 to nothing. So who knows? Well, it's, like I said, the Buckeyes won today. Yes. Wasn't pretty, but it's a W. That's true. UK and Tennessee are playing tonight. Marshall was up last time I saw. They're playing FAU, right? I believe that's who it is. Marshall's up 21-13. Tennessee's up 14-7. Alex Bruce on the kickoff for the Dragons. Kick it's right down the middle again. He's going to let it hit. No, that's number 16. He takes it to the left side, and he brings it out pretty decent field position. He's going to start past the 35-yard line, around the 37, 36. That was Adam Dunson on the return for the Warriors. They're going to set up shop at about the 36-yard line. Rakes brings the play in. Coach Hardings. They break the huddle. Twin receivers right. Hands ball to the left with the wing right. Rakes in the shotgun. Takes a snap. He fakes the handoff. He keeps it around the left side. And he's tackled in there by Xander Schmidt. Xander's all over the place tonight, Coach. He has had a heck of a game. Yeah, I see he had a visit up to Ohio University this past week. Brings up second down 
Eight yards to go, gain of two on the play. Ball sitting on the 38-yard line. 11, 17, 18, uh, 16 on a running clock. Second quarter action, Dragons leading 21-14. This time they're going to come out in the tight end to the right. It's an unbalanced line. They're going to run quick out here to number 13. Nice play. And on the play, JD. number two, J.D. Brumfield. On the reception, Ethan Albert. Gain of one on the play. Uh, let's give him two. Be third down six. Hey, you know what, Coach? That was a good play call. Uh, J.D. just got over and made yeah. a heck of a play. I mean, that was a good – he was open. J.D. Okay. just – Speed on speed yes. right there. That was a good play call. A little flood pass to this side. It was this good. This time, Alt goes wide to the left. They've got a wing left and a slot in the left. Ham's ball over here on the right by himself. He's going to run a go pattern. They throw it down the middle, and it's short. I believe that pass was, was intended for number 16, Adam Dunson. Falls incomplete, and it'll bring up fourth down and six. And I don't know if they're punting. Yes, they're in. Uh, hmm. They got the quarterback back as the punter, but he's not the regular punter. I don't know what they're doing. They must be going for it. They are. No, they're going to quick kick it. He runs to his right. And that ball's going to hit at the 20 and bounce around and roll out of bounds at the 20-yard line. So the Dragons are going to take over in their own 20 on their own 20-yard line with 9:55 to go in the second quarter. Dragons up seven, 21-14. That's a nice punt. That was a nice punt. Yeah. Uh, he wasn't the usual punter, so I didn't know where they were going to go for it. Or and he ran a little Australian style punt to the right and uh, got it down on the 20 yard line. Well, I just heard from Brad Lehman, his deputy asked he's at the Ironton game. He said still 10 to nothing right before halftime. Dragons come out with two, uh, with tight end to the left, trip receivers. Now they're gonna run. I'm uh, going to call timeout. There was confusion there. And Melvin Cunningham recognized it. And the clock running down on the play clock. And so he calls timeout. I believe that's the Dragons' first timeout. Yeah, how much time's on that clock? I can't see from here. Nine right? minutes and 55 seconds. Whew. It's been a long game so far. Let's see if we can find any more updates anywhere. Twenty-one seventeen. Oh, he's giving college scores. Did you hear that one? LSU's up on Alabama, seven yep. nothing. Saw that a minute ago. Dragons come out. The two receivers to the right. Two backs in the backfield. Zion Martin to the right. J.D. Brumfield in the pistol. They hand it Brumfield. He turns it up. He's got a little bit of room, and he's going to get about seven or eight, nine yards on the play. Ball's going to be just short of the 30-yard line, so it's going to be second down, one yard to go for the Dragons. Come out in the same set. Twins right, tight end left. Martin, hand to Brumfield. He spins. He's got the first down. They're going to take him down at about the 35-yard line. That was number 10, Dalen Johns Johnson. Johnston. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Dalen Johnston on the tackle. 
Dragons come out again with two backs in the backfield beside Jackson. Brumfield in the pistol, twins right. He fakes a handoff and he looks. And he got one wide open down the middle, Xander Smith. He's got it. And he's making moves. And he's going to be around. Oh, oh what a man, move. what a move he put on. He put a move on Coral Ham's ball and went right around him, tiptoed down the sideline, and he's in for the score. <coughs> Excuse me. Man. Coach, I'll tell you what. You know we got J.D., <coughs> but daggone, if Xander, I'll tell you what, when Xander shows up, he shows up. He's, a, he's an incredible oh, he player. He is a very exciting ball player. Beautiful pass, too. Uh, oh, that yes. was an excellent pass. They've used him in the Wildcat, and he hasn't been there yet tonight, but, man, he's a player. There's a snap, the hold, and the kick is good. And the Dragons go up 28-14 with 8.51 to go in the second quarter. That was a beautiful pass from Jackson. Oh, yes. Yeah, see, uh, they went for the fake, and he was wide open. Xander made and some Ant good ball had had the angle on him, but Xander just made a terrific move. Gave him a little head and shoulder fake to the right, went left right around him down the sideline and in the end zone. The Dragons are going to take a two-touchdown lead, 8.51 to go in the second quarter. All right, let me give you a couple updates. Tennessee 14-7 oh. over Kentucky. Uh, LSU 7-0 over Alabama. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, Indiana and the team up north tied at zero. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm, I still don't see anything. The Dragons are going to come out for the. Fourth time. Kick off. Alex Bruce. And here's the kick. And it's a short one this time. It's going to hit at about the – oh, but it's taken in there, but he slips down. I think it's number 13. Ethan Albert made a good snag of that hop, but you know, went Coach, to make that, his move to the that, right. His feet went job. off and under him. Good job kicking. I wouldn't kick that ball deep anymore either. I'd pooch that thing up and let's let our guys get down and cover it. Hey, very well, quickly, Coach. Uh, Ridge were, Ridgewood, 13, Wheelersburg, 10, second quarter. Ball resting on the 30-yard line. The Warriors come out wide, twins to the right with the wing right, and one receiver left, which is Am's ball, who has already received two touchdowns. Quarterback keeps this time, fakes to the tailback, and now we got a fumble. It's picked up over there on the left sideline. I think they're going to call him down. Uh, they may call him down. I think the umpire called him down. And that's going to be a gain of about four yards on the play. Bring up second down and six yards to go. Uh, uh, let's make it a five-yard gain. Ball was on the 30, and now it's on the 35. So it'll be bring, bring up second down, five to go for the Warriors. They come out and the same set, wing right, twins right, wide receiver left. Rakes takes the snap, fires out here to the right for number three. That's going to be a first down, Coach. That's going to be Elijah Alt, and he is wrapped up by Bryson Hunt. And but he's he's taken down right at the first down mark, and that'll be a first and ten for the Warriors. Ball resting on the 40 yard line. Do you realize what a good throw that was from that quarterback? He can, he's where he threw, he just winged that thing. He out can there. wing it. Warriors break the huddle this time. They have twins to the left, and they're going to bring Ann's ball to the right with the wing left. Rakes in the shotgun. He hands, no, he fakes the handoff and he's up the middle again. 
He's got good yardage. And this time he's going to pick up about eight or nine on the play. It's going to be a nine-yard gain to be second down and one. Ball at the 49-yard line. 7.20 on a running clock. Dragons leading 28-14. Rakes comes in, and Dalen Johnston comes in for Elijah Alt. This time they're going to come out with uh, tight end to the left. The snap is under center, and Rakes fumbled it, and he's plowed under there by number 20. Uh, no, that was... Number 23, Riley Kazee. Riley Kazee wrapped him up, and he loses. Uh, no, he, well, he, he had about an eight-yard game, but uh, lost three yards on that fumble. The ball is going to be at the 45, bring up third down, five yards to go. We've got Twins right, one left with the wing right. Breaks. Oh, we got... False start here on this end, on this side. So it's going to make it third down, 10 yards to go for the Warriors. Let's see if the penalties affect their drive this time like it did us earlier. Well, it's a little tougher situation now, third and 10 as opposed to third and five. And folks at home, that changes your your thinking as a coach about what you can and can't do. Right. This time they're going to come out, twins to the right, wing left with wide receiver left, which is Ansball. And we got a blitz by Cummings. He throws it out to Ansball. He's got it. And he's taken down after a 15-yard gain. That's going to bring up a first down for the, for the Christian Warriors. At the Dragon 45 yard line. 5.29 to go in the half. Nice throw, good catch out there by Ansball. Very talented receiver. He's already had two touchdown receptions here in the first half. I'll tell you what, he's tough. I'll, that was a great throw by that quarterback right there. Unbelievable. Here. He can throw darts. Okay. Twins right with the wing right. Ansball to the left. Brakes takes a snap, fakes the handoff, tries to keep it, but he's met in there by J.D. Brumfield for about a three-yard loss. Brumfield just mowed him down. You know, so far in this game, they haven't had much uh, success running the ball. No. They, I don't think that uh, you're going to see a whole lot of that. Uh, Dragon's front line is just dominating the line of scrimmage. This time they're going to move the ball up a yard, so it's going to be second down and about 12. This time they come out and three receivers to the right, put Ann's ball in the slot. Rakes takes a snap, rolls to his right, and he's hit as the ball is delivered, and we've got a flag over here. I don't know what we have. A legal receiver downfield because they covered up the. Yep. <laughs> so I don't know. Do you want to go third down and 12? Or do you want to go second down and 17? We'll see what he decides. They're going to decline it. I don't know. They went third and 10 and got it a while ago. So let's yes, see they what did. they come back to. You know what, Coach? This, this is really is four down territory right here anyway. Sure. They're down 14. They're on the plus side of the field. I'm Ball I'm sitting looking, on the yeah. Dragon 47-yard line. I'm looking to get half of it back and then fight another down to get the other half. This time we're going to go twins right with the wing right. Nam's ball to the left. Breaks in the shotgun. He fakes a handoff. Now they're going to run a little out pattern. Number 13, he's got room. And he's going to – we got a – I don't know if they called him down or they have a fumble. I think they Looks called like him down. 
It's going to bring up fourth down. Fourth down and about and two yards to go for the first down. Yes, they are going to go for it. They're bringing their big tight end in, number yes. 10. That's Dalen Johnston. He comes in for Elijah Alt. Rakes brings the play in from Coach Hardings. This time they're going to come out and tie it in to the right, which is Johnston. They got backfield. Oh, it's picked off by number 27, Steeler Leap. Dove in the air and threw it a little bit behind the intended receiver. And he got his hands under it and brought it in for the interception. Another turnover for the Warriors. <laughs> and guess what, Coach? That guy was open. The quarterback just didn't make a good throw. No, Steeler but he Leap had a lot of it. pressure That's on it, true. too. Steeler Leap made a heck of a jump on the ball. I don't know it. who it was, but somebody was pressuring him from the backside. This time we're going to go trips to the right and wide, wide receiver left. Jackson in the shotgun. Brumfield offset to his right. There's the snap. He's looking. He fakes. Oh, he's uh, he going to be down. Sack on the play by number 63. That Coach, is that Luke a, Snedeker. It's good coverage. That was a hitch and go out here to Cam yes, Kitts. Yes, he didn't, he didn't go for it. And uh, that was Ann's ball on the coverage. That was a good job right there. The Dragons are going to lose about nine on the play. It's going to bring up second down, maybe eight. Second down, 18. Ball on the 30. And the 29. Twins or trips to the right. Okay, hands off to Brumfield. He turns it up for about five. And it's going to bring up third down and 14 for the Dragons. This time the Dragons are going to go the trips to the right side. One receiver left. Jackson takes the snap. He throws a bullet out here, and they run the, the uh, oh, my. They run the old hook and ladder. <laughs> that was Bryson Hunt on the reception, and he laterals to Steeler Leap, who goes down the left sideline and gets enough for the first down. Do you know he anybody that sitting, baby out the back know, page, I was going to say, do you know anybody sitting in this press box would have run that play? <laughs> <laughs> More than once. Dragons come out and tied in to the right. It's an unbalanced line. They're going to run the quarterback keep. Peyton Jackson turns it up, and he's going to get about eight yards on the play. Uh, it be second down and two yards to go. And they're in the hurry up mode. Trips to the right again. Jackson sprints out, turns it up, and he throws it deep down the sideline. He's got, oh, my. He dropped the ball. That was Xander Schmidt. Ball oh, dropped. Oh, that's a great pass. And we got a yellow hanky laying on the 40. <laughs> I don't know whether he was over the, he might have been passing the line of scrimmage when he threw that. No, they got holding on the Dragons. So that's going to. They're going to be second and 12. They're going to back it up to the 50 yard line. And it's going to bring up second down, 12 yards to go. One minute and 13 seconds to go in the second quarter. Dragons leading 28 to 14. Coach, you have an update. Fort Fry 22, Nelsonville, York 6 at the half. 
They are the number one seed in this region. Region 23, Division 6. Dragons trip receivers to the right. Jackson, they're going to run a slip screen to Xander. He turns it up, and he's only going to get a yard on the play. That's going to bring up third down, nine yards to go for the Dragons. 54-53 on a running clock. And Coach Cunningham takes a timeout. 48 seconds to go in the half. Dragons leading by two scores. Well, what are we dialing up here? Uh, I don't know. I kind of like those two little 10 yard passes on the sideline. It ended up in two touchdowns for the Dragons. One to Sandra Schmidt and one to Steeler Leap. I don't know if we've come back to anything on the side, have we? Uh, yeah, we ran that slip screen just now, but that got nothing. I assume the Fairland Band will be out here tonight. I don't see a band from Worthington Christian, so. Oh, we're going to have a special guest up here. Special to guest up here. Tried to get him on the pregame show earlier in the year and couldn't be here. It was, it's funeral home, so. Dragons we'll come out. They've got twin receivers right and twins left. Jackson in the shotgun, takes a snap. And he hands the ball off to Brumfield. He turns it up, and he gets nothing. He gets back to the original line of scrimmage. That's going to bring up fourth down and nine yards to go. Ball at the 47-yard line of the Warriors. And the Dragons are letting the clock run down. There's about, oh, yeah, well, somebody called timeout. I think it was Worthington. Worthington called timeout. They're going to try to get a return maybe here. There he is. Hey, it's the A-team there behind us, Coach. That's right, baby. That's right. <laughs> Good to see you, Coach. Yeah, you Glad you're here. I am. Playoff time, baby. Yeah, that's right. Coach, our special guest at halftime is going to be Coach John Buchanan, our girls' high school basketball coach. And we're going to talk to him for a few minutes. Oh, yeah. That's uh, not far off. What, a couple of weeks? A couple weeks. Dragons come out, trips right. They're in their wide punt formation. Xander Smith back. He takes a snap. He kicks it. Nice punt. Turns the spiral over. The ball bouncing around down around the 10-yard line. And the Dragons are going to kill it at the 9. And that will bring up first and 10 for Worthington. 11 seconds remaining in the half. Are we going to put a little prevent defense here, Coach? I don't know. If I was Worthington, I'd take a knee. Don't want to make any mistakes down at that end of the field. Just snap it, take a knee, and come out second half. Well, Ann's ball's coming out wide to the right. He's got his back up tight. I believe they are going to kneel on it, and they do. And that's going to end the first half. The Dragons, with your score at halftime, Fairland Dragons 28, Worthington Christian Warriors 14. We're going to take a little break, or I'm going to take a little break. And well, we're I'll gonna, tell you what, we're going to take a two-minute break. Two-minute break. Let Coach Buchanan get in here. Yes. And uh, we'll be back in about two minutes.
to halftime with your Fairland High School Marching Band. Our next musical selections include Mavis Mark, Baba O'Reilly, and Kokomo. Folks, we are back at halftime, and we have a special guest tonight, Coach Jonathan Buchanan. He's the high school girls basketball coach here at Fairland High School, one of my former players. Been around here for a while. Uh, coach, how many years you been coaching girls the, the high, high school? The high school girls team? Um, this is year 13. I believe it's year 13. And how many years did you coach down in the middle school? Middle school, I coached four years. So, yeah, I've been – and then youth league. I mean, this is – you're a, you know you're aging me right this now. This is you the yeah, I know. I was I, I was your first team though, right? Yeah, you That's right. what I thought. I um, wish you'd have had a good coach back then. You all could have done a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think about that all the time, Coach. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, it was a great experience, obviously. Uh, I know one thing, you all were in shape. We were in shape. We were in shape. I don't really ever bring up things to my former players like, well, when I played, I don't really do that, you know. But I could definitely say, well, when I played, you know, we were in shape. We we ran and we we, we ran some more, you know. So yeah, we should have done more ball stuff, but that's besides. Well, hey, tell us about this year. Tell us what's going on um, with your team. I mean, obviously we're super young. I thought we were kind of young last year. I mean, as far as like we lost six seniors off last year's team, but we really were young in some important spots. This year we only have we have zero seniors, two juniors, and everybody else freshman sophomore. So, um, but we really like them. I mean, I think they they work really hard. Um, we had a scrimmage today at Alexander and really played well. Um, they really are doing everything we ask them to do, and um, we're really, really excited about it. What do you think about the, the league this year? How do you think you're going to fare there? I mean, I, think, I don't know who's coming back yeah. for who. Yeah, I think we have a chance. I mean, we we've uh, we won the league last year, um, and then a couple years before that we won the league. So. And I think we have a chance to win this year, but um, obviously, obviously, most people feel like you know you're coming in the year and you feel like you have a good chance to win. Right. Um, I think there might be a little more parity this year. You know, Colgrove brings back some kids that 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 mattered to them to their success last year. Um, Rock Hill has um, added a lot of kids that um, haven't played for them in the past that that I think from from what I understand are, are really going to help them. And um, there's a lot of good coaches in our league. You know, I mean. I've been at this for, you know, 13 years of high school girls basketball starting year 13. Chris Ball's on year 13, and Dave Adams is is our senior guy in the league, you know. So um, Dave's been at it even longer than us, you know. So there's a lot of good um, coaches that have a lot of a lot of experience. So we always got to go up against people that are prepared to play. Well, tell us about Brody a little bit. <laughs> um, <laughs> he had a great cross country year. That's what I, I mean, wanted to hear from. He you. really did. He had he had a great cross country year. Um, I obviously super proud of him. You know, he really didn't run well at the regional. It was super muddy or whatever. But I mean, it was muddy for every runner in that race. And he didn't he didn't have a great regional. But um, and I'm not the type of parent that would tell him that like, hey man, like I, I mean, you gotta you you gotta put your big boy pants on, and if you don't perform then you don't perform you know and you got to own it and he 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 didn't he didn't do as well as what we wanted him to do but i think he had a great year to be first team all league second place in the league and you know top um eight at districts i mean he he really had a good year and i actually uh bought his first car the other day so that's oh, a, that's, a, that's kind of crazy man um, it was you know it's yeah it's about <laughs> it's about 60 degrees today outside so um of course, of course it's a convertible mustang so we were out driving around with the top down in the 60 degree weather because we hadn't done that before. So that was, it was, it was good. And you probably won't do that again, will you? 
Yeah, I, I, yeah, probably not. You know, probably not. I mean, but that's uh, like being on yeah. a motorcycle. It's yeah. twenty degrees colder yeah. when you're on that motorcycle. Exactly. Ride. But uh, yeah, like he 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 was all about it. He was excited. He was texting me when I was on the bus on the way back from the scrimmage. Like, hey, Dad, can we do this? You know, so he was excited about that. Well, that's awesome. Well, you know what? I don't want to forget Mackenzie. How's she doing? She's doing great. Um, I mean, obviously, I owns a Studio Three Hundred One business and dance studio in Chesapeake. Um, she actually, she again, aging myself too. Like she just drove to Cleveland yesterday. She's a part of a dance company that she dances for, uh, based out of Portsmouth, and they danced in Cleveland this weekend. So she, uh, she drove up there yesterday by herself and danced and came home today. And it's, it's crazy to me to think about. You know, my kids have always been to all these sporting events since they were, you know, before they could walk. And it doesn't seem like it was that long ago. And now they're. Doing all well, these, doing like all was, these adult things. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's that long ago you were playing basketball for me. But yeah, 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 it is. Well, what do you tell me? What you think about the game so far? First half, man. It's been really exciting, hasn't? It? I mean, we've saw a lot of big plays. You know, I mean, number six for uh, um, Worthy and Christian can really play. I mean, he looks like a really legit receiver. And I'll tell you what, the quarterback is. I mean, even though he's not very big, I mean, he really has a like a solid arm on him. I like the he'll throw from different angles and stuff. I think it's he's, he's really fun to watch and. Obviously, we have some really, really good playmakers. Xander's had a, has, had, has had a great half. Um, I think Peyton's had a really good half. Peyton's been on target with most every throw. Um, so, yeah, I, uh, I just hope we can continue to be explosive in the second half and get on to the next round. All right, well, Coach, that's Coach Buchanan. We're going to take another minute break, and then Coach Harris is going to have another special guest that's going to talk to Thank you. Thank you, Coach. All righty. We'll be back in a minute. Thank you. Okay, we're back here at halftime. My guest here tonight is athletic director, former assistant coach, former player, Jeff Gorby. Coach, I, I want to applaud you. I don't know who it was, but uh, they did a fantastic job on getting this field ready to play after last week. <laughs> we, uh, Coach, we actually kind of just left it alone until today. Uh, we had Rick Eplin come up. He brought one of his big blacktop rollers up. He worked on it for about an hour and a half, two hours for us. I was down here about 7 a.m. this morning marking off sprinklers and, and everything. Uh, Coach Jackson, his wife Kelly, I know Kelly was painting the F this afternoon when I got back down here. Uh, Coach Jackson does a great job of putting things together, getting it painted. Uh, Melvin's also involved in that. And, and I know you and I spent several nights out here painting that field. We know what Thursday it, what, nights. <laughs> Thursday nights. A lot of fun. What it, what it goes into to getting this ready, but we can't say enough about what Rick Eplin did for us, volunteering to bring the, the rollers up here and, and get this field back. That's a sharp-looking F out there, too, tonight. That coach. is. That's Kelly a very, done a fantastic job, didn't she? Kelly did a great job on that F. Okay, what we got in store next week? Should the Dragons prevail? Uh, Dragons win tonight. You know, we're looking at West Jefferson or uh, winner West Jefferson Northmore. Um, that game could be uh, anywhere from – Waverly, Chillicothe to Jackson. Uh, I think it depends on a lot where the Ironton game is going to be played. Um, you know, it depends on who Iron's playing. If Williamsburg happens to win that Iron Williamsburg game, could it be at Portsmouth and they send us to one of those three locations? Jackson, I think, could be a good one. Those are three fairly decent. Uh, I mean, the fields are fantastic. Oh, yeah. As far as a neutral field, that would be mm -hmm. uh, pretty good. Uh, not, a, not a bad traveling. No. Uh, for the Dragon fans, especially so, when it, with the new bypass in there, you know it's oh, about yes. an hour, about an hour and fifteen, that hour and twenty. Sweet, minutes. Oh yeah, minute a drive to Waverly. We, we've had a lot of success basketball in Waverly with the girls program. We really love the Waverly facility. Hopefully that w could be a great place for us. But if not, we, coach, it doesn't matter. They they tell us if we're going to go out to back of Willowwood on a baseball field, we're going to go play. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't matter right. where it is. That's um, right. And then you look at, you, you get by that West Jeff Northmore game, you get a win there. Probably looking at Fort Fry. I'm going to assume that game would probably be in the Athens area. That's about uh, half Last level. report, they were up 22 to 6. 22 to 6. So, you know, that regional final game very well could be at Athens or Jackson. 
So, again, uh, easy, tri- easy trips. Matter. As long oh. as we're playing there, uh, <laughs> we don't care where I, we play. Coach, I agree with you. We'll, we'll play in some cornfield up through there somewhere. Just as long as we get to play, it's all that matters. Yes. Well, what do you think about the first a- half? We, fe- we felt like the field was a fast track, and, mm-hmm. and uh, they have a tremendous wide receiver in Amsball, Cor- Corel Amsball, mm-hmm. made two really great catches. But the Dragons have been opportunistic, and t- they inter- uh, Xander Smith, man, <laughs> what a player. Oh, yeah. He's just all over the place. He got a pick six, and uh, uh, nice interception over here by Steeler Leap. We weren't able to take advantage of that, but uh, Dragons got a couple turnovers, and uh, they're up two scores. But uh, I don't think this game is anywhere f- far from over. No, no, Coach, I don't. Uh, again, you mentioned a fast track out here. Kind of maybe more looks like the old uh, Darlington Raceway out here. Kind of <laughs> kind of beat up a little bit, but, man, it is a fast track. Um, like I said, number six, unbelievable player. He's made two great grabs for touchdowns for them. But on the other hand, I think Xander Smith right now, if I'm giving player the game for Fairland, it's got to be Xander Smith. He's got three touchdowns, two offensively. He made a, a, a great move down here on about the 10-yard line. Oh, to, yes, that to was get on loose. Ansball, too. Yes, to get and loose. Ansball get him had the angle on him, but he gave him a little head and shoulder fake to the inside and zip right around him. He went and tiptoed down the left sideline for that. Right. Uh, I think that was a fourth touchdown, uh-huh. his third of the game. And Coach, and I don't think either. I think both of them have at least one more piece, if not two more piece in them. Um, it's going to be exciting second half. Let's just see what happens. It's been a very exciting first half, and uh, the field is in tremendous shape. Mm-hmm. And uh, we look for uh, a good ball game here in the second yeah. half. We got about seven minutes okay. before the uh, second half kickoff. Uh Got basketball season coming up here. Uh, what do you think about the? Uh, let's talk boys basketball. We've been talking girls basketball, but uh, we had Aiden Porter on our uh, pregame show we did uh, mm-hmm. before the Portsmouth game. What a delightful young man and a special talent. And uh, he got some players coming back with him. Oh yeah. Uh, hey. I mean they graduated four starters, but you know the Thacker boy is is a player and. Uh, the kid that uh, I can't remember all their names, Davis. Is that Will Davis, yeah. Uh, they've, he's got some players coming back, so I, I look for them. They're not going to be a pushover by any means. Yeah, what do Coach, you think? We're, we're super excited about the boys' basketball season. We're super excited about the girls' basketball season. Hey, you know, you spent some years on that sideline, and you coached some great players. I've been around watching games since my dad started driving the bus, probably 89, 90. Watched some great basketball players. I, I think – A.P. Porter is probably one of the better ones I've watched wear green and white. Um, he has the opportunity to be the school's leading scorer um, at the pace he's going right now. The accolades keep coming in for him, but it, it's not just his team. A.P.'s the leader on the floor, off the floor, but he's surrounded oh, yeah. himself with, with Will Davis, who's a sophomore, oh, J.D. Yeah. Thacker. Uh, we got a new, new kid in by the name of Ethan Taylor that transfers over from Midland over here. Um, you know, we got some young freshmen coming over. Brody Buchanan's one of them. You know, he's going to be in the mix a little bit. Uh, it, it's going to be an exciting year. Xander Smith coming back. You know, we've got guys with regional final experience right. returning um, and guys that stepped up at different times. You, you take J.D. Thacker, he single-handedly wins a game at Colgrove for yes, us last year. Yes, I remember that. Comes I off watched that. Yeah. He it, had a great ball game. Right. So we're, we're excited about it. Again, Coach, you know, we can't say enough about it, but we also got wrestling coming up. A lot of these football players, we're trying to get them to go over and wrestle for Coach Wentz. Coach Wentz does an outstanding job with, with the wrestling program, uh, getting those kids in the weight classes they need to be, and they're always competitive. Um, Seth DeMint coming back, he's a senior. I think he could be the lone senior, if I'm not mistaken, for the Dragons this year. We got C.J. Graham coming in, who's a freshman. Right. Um, phenomenal wrestler. Uh, he, he's a little dude. You know, the program says 6'6", 105, but he's more 5'5", 105. <laughs> um, has my, I got my chubby little fingers going too fast. I don't know. He must have. <laughs> but um, CJ looks to be, you know, he's going to make a run for a conference championship and a district championship in that lightweight class. So we're, we're super excited about what the fall is going to bring with us. I believe we're going to have a couple bowlers also this year. Really? Uh, we, we've had a bowler the last couple years. Um, who's at Shawnee now? Yeah, uh, the Trent Fuller. Fuller boy did that. Yeah, 
Um, I know Jameson Lauder is going to step in there and, and be, be a bowler for us. And I think I heard another one. I can't remember the name right off the top of my head. But we're always growing at Fairland. We're always looking at new and exciting things. The conference is now recognizing bowling as a sport. So, you know, we can compete for a conference championship. Uh, something that we're, you know, we're, we always want to put numbers on a banner somewhere. <laughs> well, you've been doing that here recently, Coach. Uh, have just a tremendous run of athletes here in the last, gosh, 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I don't want to lose the fact of the job that you've done. Uh, you've been probably one of the most hands-on athletic directors. You know, we had John Limley who's doing an outstanding job and Roger Schneider. I want to shout out to Rog and Donna down there in Lincoln, North Carolina. And uh, I just want to tell you, though, buddy, you have went above and beyond to make your, your school uh, just recognizable in the area. And, and the uh, coaches have done a fantastic job of, of uh, presenting their programs. At, and I'm going to tell you, what is it, seven conference championships in a row mm -hmm. for the uh, boys' basketball team? The girls have got loads of talent coming and loads of talent now on right. the team. So, uh, and John Buchanan's done a fantastic job, him and Adam Alt. Oh, I better get a little plug in there for Ashley. Oh, yeah. She's taking She's over the seventh grade, I think. Right. And uh, just, uh, just a tremendous run here over the years. And uh, we thank you for the job you're doing. I appreciate it. And, guys, I, big shout-out to you and, and Coach Carroll here standing behind me. This, The amount of support that we've got for you guys, the outpouring uh, every week, texting me, people texting me from – California to New York to Virginia to Florida. Hey, is is it old, the old Codgers? I believe is what it is. Are they going to be on live? You know, covering the game this week and and everything. So you guys have really made this something special. I appreciate it so much. Uh, you know, hopefully we can be back in press box next week. We win where we're at. We'll carry it over to basketball season. Uh, you guys have definitely made my job a whole lot easier. I don't have to worry about this. I know it's going to be set up. Doug and Charlie are going to get everything set up. You guys are going to be very impartial and have a great broadcast. And so I do appreciate everything you guys have done. It's 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 special to me to come up here and set with, with both of you guys. I've coached with you, um, played for both of you. So it, it's really a special moment to come up here and hang out with you guys a little bit. And I do appreciate it. I'm going to get back down here on the play clock. You guys have a great second half, and hopefully we see you next week. Hey, in the press thank box. you for letting us do it, man. You're we, welcome. Uh, it keeps us connected, and uh, <laughs> we don't have to coach or yell or scream. Or anything. <laughs> we just call it like we see it, and uh, we appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Coach. That's Jeff Gorby, athletic director here at Fairland High School. We're going to take another minute pause, and then we're going to be back with uh, the two old codgers, I reckon. I'm Jack Harris along with Dave Carroll, and uh, we'll be back in just a minute.
back here to the Concrete Palace here at uh, Jim Mayo Memorial Stadium. We're best getting set for the second half. We've got it all oh, about two minutes and 45 seconds to let the teams warm up a little bit as what's been a very exciting first half of uh, high school football, Ohio State playoff football. This is uh, Region 23, Division 6. Dragons lead the Worthington Christian Warriors 28-14. I want to apologize to the Buckeye Trail Warriors because I couldn't remember, and it was just sitting right here in front of me. <laughs> but uh, that's who the Dragons played last week. Hey, shout out, Tom. Okay. Uh, I, all right. Glenn Stapleton. I saw Glenn. Glenn was a tailback on the 1968 uh, Fairland football team, which I was a part of. I was a sophomore. And uh, that was the first year the Dragons ever won an OVC championship, 1968. We, we went 8-1-1. One, one. Uh, shout out to the family. Peggy, hello, dear. And my daughters, Ashley and Holly, and their husbands, Keith and Matt. And uh, Stella's got a birthday coming up, Stella Grace. We, uh, we'll be celebrating later on this week or next week. Yep. Anyway, uh, Stella and Cash are Ashley's two children. Yeah, I already told And uh, Holly and Keith have Lola Jean, Rosie Jacks, and Frankie June. And hello to the family. Shout outs to my boys in Florida. Rick Ray, Barry, Bob, Skipper, Skipper Johnson from Galpolis. Hey, we got a lot of people in Florida. Oh, a lot There's of people. There's a lot of people Florida. from here that are in JD Florida. JD Leap and uh, Rob, Debbie Stife. I know they're tuned in, but they're not from Florida. They're from Columbus, but I think they're down in Florida. Uh, anyway, hello to all of you, and we thank you for tuning in all over the country. Coach, go ahead with your shout out. Oh, I got a bunch today. Go with it. I got a, I got a, I got a lot. First of all, give a shout out to Principal Miss Leap. She's not here, and I haven't seen her for a week or so. So uh, she's listening to the game tonight. So Miss Leap, shout out to you. Hope you're doing good. Um, got a shout out to Nick and uh, my daughter-in-law, Anissa. They're down in Columbia, South Carolina. I haven't heard from you today, so I don't know if they're listening. Uh, we're going to shout to Isabella. She's down in Moorhead. Now she's listening, and her and her roommate Sarah and their friend Stephanie are having fried rice tonight. She's already called and told me. Uh, so there you go, girls. I hope you're enjoying the ball game. Uh, we've got to give a shout-out to uh, Bryn. She's working tonight. And, of course, we can't forget the originator of the Codgers, Mary Johnson, <laughs> and her husband, my brother-in-law, Tom. Uh, they're watching, and guess what tomorrow is? It is Tom's birthday. So happy, happy birthday, birthday, Tom. Tom. Uh, real quick, shout out to Ryan, and uh, Ryan, my nephew, Elizabeth, her husband, Zach, and of course, can't forget, Miss Montgomery, Cheyenne River, and Levi. All right, the Dragons are kicking off here in the second half. They'll kick from uh, the south end of the field toward the north end zone, and back deep is... Uh, Number 45, that's uh, Tyler White. And uh, that's a short kickoff, and it's taken by one of the up men. Uh, number 13, number 13, Ethan Albert. And it's returned to pretty good field position. They're going to start at the 39-yard line. It'll be first down 10 for the Worthington Christian Warriors. So they come out with twins to the right. As Am's ball to the left and with a wing to the right. Rakes takes uh, fakes the handoff. He turns it up and he's got a hole. He goes down and he slides down at about the, and they're going to throw a flag. He slid down at about the uh, 47 yard line. And they're going to call a late hit, I think. Personal foul. Uh, when he slid down, somebody came on top of him. And they're going to flag the Dragons for 15 yards. And that's going to be a first down 
in Dragon territory. That takes the ball down to the 38-yard line of the Dragons. Now, Worthington Christians got a good start here in the second half. This time we're going to go twins to the right, the wing right. Ams ball to the left. And the shotgun is Rakes. Alongside of him, number 22, Joshua Carroll. Rakes takes the snap. He drops. He looks. Now he throws it. Air mills it out of bounds to the left. He intended for Ams ball, who was covered over there by Xander Schmidt. That's a nice, that was smart play. Everybody was covered, and he had to get rid of that ball. Had pressure coming. Pretty heady for a sophomore. Yep. He, he's. As we stated earlier, this is a fairly young Worthington Christian ball club. They only have six seniors on the team out of 29 players dressed out tonight. Rakes brings in the play. They're going to break again in the same set. Twins to the right, wing right. Ams ball to the left. Rakes in the shotgun. Carroll fakes the handoff. Rakes keeps it. He's looking, but he's going nowhere. He's going to get a, about a one-yard loss on the play. It's going to bring up second down and 14 to go. I want to mention one thing to you. I didn't talk to Coach Buchanan about this, but you know he runs our uh, youth league girls basketball, and he told me we have 110 girls signed up this year. 110. They had an election day camp the other day, and they had 80 kids there. That's unbelievable. Same set. Went, uh, twins this time. Ann's ball's coming over. Oh, we got a false start on number 16. Adam Dunson took off too soon. That's a five-yard penalty. Let's bring up second down and 20. Second down and about 20. Yes. Ball sitting now on the Fairland 49-yard line. Give a little shout-out to Dylan Murphy and his wife, Brooke. They're watching here in Peeville, eating a pizza and sitting us and watch us on the big screen. There you go, Murph. All right, same set. Hands ball wide right. He's, he's shot. Brumfield on the blitz. He gets to Rakes. Uh, it seemed like he got him around the knees. And uh, Rakes goes down. That's going to bring up third down. And uh, what do we call it? Demaria Street. <laughs> third down and forever. They got a long way to go. That's uh, ball sitting now on the... Uh, Worthington Christian side of the 50, around the 42-yard line. This brings it up, actually third down and 29 yards to go for the first down. This time they come out on the wing right, one receiver, uh, tight end to the right. They got, they're gonna throw the slip screen and it's going nowhere. Riley Kazee read that one, wrapped him up, stopped his momentum, and uh, no gain on the play. That's a nice play. Fourth down. Nice defensive play. Fourth down, 29 yards to go. 20. They're calling it fourth down, 27. And in the punt, number 16, Adam Dunson. Snap is good. Dunson goes off to the right. Good kick. Spiral. And it's going to go out of bounds somewhere around between the 20 and 30 yard line. It's right at the 25. That's a good spot by the officials. The Dragons will take over on their own 25 yard line. Eight minutes and 42 seconds to go in the third quarter. Dragons leading 28-14. I was trying to find some 
scores for us, Coach. I'm struggling. struggling. <laughs> the Dragons come out, twin receivers to the right, two backs in the backfield. Zion Martin beside Jackson in the shotgun. And Brumfield in the pistol. He fakes to Brumfield. There's a quick hitter out to, I believe that was Steeler Leap. And he's going to get about nine or ten on the play. That's going to be about nine yards. And bring up second down, one yard to go. Coach, you got an update on the Ironton game. It's uh, Drew Rowe, the quarterback from, from Portsmouth, is out. He's been hurt. He's out. Oh, my. So we'll find a score That's a there. killer. Yes. Dragons, twins to the left. Two backs. They're going to throw the same thing to the left this time. They got a, they got a uh, block, an illegal block on Xander Schmidt over here. I think they got a block in the back there, Coach. So that's going to back them up 10. It's going to be second down and 11. Got another update. Maybe 12. Coach Barnesville is up 14 to 6 over oh, Columbus God. Kip. Barnesville's a number four seed. Kip was a team that knocked off Sims uh, Valley. Sims Valley. Yeah. Kip was number 12 seed, so. That's a close game. Yes, it is. That'll bring up second down, 11 yards to go for the Dragons. Another penalty. Dragons come out and trip, trip receivers to the right, one wide to the left. Jackson drops back. He looks. He's going to throw the screen over to Brumfield, and that is red in there by number 13. Ethan Albert is all over him. Minimal gain. Actually a loss on the play. Coach, they had Coach that sniffed out. They had three people there. They're a very well-coached team. They are. I, that's what I said. They came out, they just look very disciplined. Yeah, well, I, they look like they've been, taught. you know. <laughs> coached. Taught and coached. and They play with poise. They've done a great scouting report on the drag. Yes, they have. Jackson back. He's throwing deep. He's got – he had uh, – Steeler Leap was o open – and they've got a penalty flag on the play, and I think we've got pass interference, and that's going to give the Dragons 15 yards plus a first down. So, now Coach, I've got to be call. honest with you, I didn't see that. Did you see it? Well, I was looking at Steeler, and I did. it, it happened behind the intended receiver. But it uh, doesn't matter. It's 15 yards, and the Dragons are going to pick up a first down on the penalty. The Dragons come out, and they've got twins to the left with an uh, unbalanced line left. Two backs in the backfield. Hands off to Brumfield. And he's run out of bounds at about the 36-yard line. Uh, make it to 37. So it's going to be a gain of about five on the play. Bring up second down, five yards to go. 6.39 on a running clock. Dragons leading 28-14. Come out and twin re receivers to the left with the unbalanced line left. Two backs in the backfield. This time they hand to Brumfield. They run the same play. He's got a little room, and he's down the left sideline. Plenty enough yardage to pick up the first down. And he's run out of bounds on the Warrior 49 yard line. Boy, the score here would go a long ways. Yes, it would. And I'll tell you what else, Coach. A nice long sustained drive with a score exactly. would go a long way. A clock eater. A clock eater. Dragons come out in the same set. Unbalanced line to oh, the left. No. Twin receivers left. Two backs in the backfield. They had to Brumfield again. This time. They were ready for him, and he's got a minimal gain of about one or two on the play. The 
They got the same formation. Unbalanced left. Fake the handoff. He's under pressure. He throws it deep down the sideline. Oh, and it goes through number nine. I believe that's Gavin Davis. The receiver went right through his hands. Would have been a great catch. Yes, that would have. And actually, you know, it was a great throw, Coach. It hit him yes. in the hands. He was the only guy that could catch it. That's right. Just couldn't hang on to it. That's that brings okay. up third down. Nine yards to go. Peyton Jackson comes in with the play. We've got three receivers to the right and one left. Cam Kitts over here. Jackson takes a snap. He drops and he throws deep down the left side and he's wide open. And that it is Bryson Hunt on. With the reception, he got behind the defender, caught it, backpedaling, turned, and took himself into the end zone. And that's going to put the Dragons up 34-14. Uh, Coach, that's another great throw. Another Peyton great Jackson. throw. Peyton Jackson has been uh, really accurate tonight, Coach. He's had a couple that uh, was a little short, but for the, the, the long balls have been right on the money. There's a snap, the kick. It's up. It's good. Dragons lead. 35 14, 540 to go in the third quarter. Coach, we got an update from the Ironton score. It's 10 to nothing, the end of the third quarter. Ironton beating Portsmouth. 10 to nothing. 10 to nothing. That's quite closer than it was the other game. Right. They played. I think Ironton ended up kind of blowing them out. Let's see. Well, Coach, how much time we got on that clock? I can't see from here. Five minutes and 40 seconds mm. to go in the third quarter. So if you are Worthington Christian, what are you thinking you got to do in the next 17 minutes? I believe I might <laughs> find out where Ann's ball is and see Getting if the I ball. couldn't create a one-on-one -on -one situation and uh, let him go to work. They've kind of held him out of this second half there. We've Fairland's done a pretty good job of keeping right. him from touching the ball. All right. Back deep, Adam Dunson for the Warriors. Alex Bruce getting ready to kick off. And there's the kick, and this time he kicks it right down the middle, and it's taken by number 13. That's it. And he up to about the 31, 32 yard line. And that's Ethan Albert. And the Warriors will take over on their own 31 yard line. Ridgewood, 20, Wheelersburg, 17, 205 left in the third. Oh, wow. That's a good one. Twin receivers right. He drops back. He's going to throw deep down sideline. He's wide open. A nice and wheel route. Oh, what a play. What a play. I don't know who that was, but he... That was Xander. Xander closed in on the receiver, number 13, Ethan Albert, stripped him of the ball. The Dragons thought they had it, but that is a gain from the 31 all the way down to the Dragons. 13-yard uh, line. And Coach, that was a great play call. They ran a wheel route. Outside there. and That's about a 55, 60-yard gain on the play there, Coach. Come out, twin receivers left. He goes in motion. Rakes takes a snap. Fakes. He keeps, and he's snowed under there quickly by R.J. Ward, number 54 for the Dragons. 
That play hasn't worked very well for them. They've cut it up a couple times for eight, nine-yard gains, but Dragons have read that play pretty well all night. Yeah. I'll tell you, Worthington Christian has beat us with a pass tonight. That's They yeah. had three big pass plays. Well, they're trying to answer Fairland's score here in the third quarter, 450 on a running clock. Twin receivers to the right, one left. Breaks in the shotgun, takes a snap, takes a handoff. And he's looking, he's looking. They're closing in on him. And that's, is that Xander or? I believe that's J.D. 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 Brumfield runs him down from behind, takes him down for a loss on the play. It'll be second down and, oh. They, they gave him a one-yard gain. Be third down. Yes. Third down, nine yards to go for the Warriors. Ball sitting on the Dragons' 12 yard line. They come out, twins right and left. And they have a tight end or a wing to the right. Empty backfield. Brakes takes a snap. He looks, looks, looks. He's got some running room. And he throws it well out of the back of the end zone, intended for Ham's ball. Uh, smart move on his part. Uh, Xander Schmidt was closing in on him, and he just decided to throw it away. It'll bring up fourth down and nine. 4.24 to go here in the third quarter. Dragons leading by three touchdowns, 35-14. Well, Coach, that was a coverage throwaway. That was good coverage by the very, Dragons. He had nowhere to coverage. go with the ball. The first time they went with an empty backfield. I'm curious to see if they'll do it again. Uh, no, this time Albert's going to be in the backfield beside. And now they're going to call timeout. That's their first of the second half. And you know what? I think that's a good, I believe that's a good call right there. He needs to get There's everything big play straight. play here, Coach. Fourth down and nine yards to go. And about uh, 13 for the touchdown. Well, let's talk about the regional brackets. I don't think we did that Go earlier. right ahead. We are playing, uh, we're the number two seed playing Worthington, number 10 seed. The winner of this game will play the winner of the West Jeff, which is a three seed, and the Northmore, which is a six seed game. Over on the other side of the bracket, Fort, Fly, well, Fort Fry, number one seed, is playing Nelsonville, York, the number eight seed, and they were up 22-6, I think. Uh, Barnesville, the number four seed, was playing Columbus Kip, number 12 seed, and they were up also in that game. So if we find out any more scores, I'll... We'll pass them along to you all, but as Coach Gorby said, if, if we can win this game, we don't know where we're going to be playing next week. I know it. It's going to be on a, uh, a neutral field. It'd be in Jackson, Portsmouth, could be in Ireton, could be at Wheelersburg, the way he explained it to me. And we don't know if we'll be there or not, but we hope Lord willing. Yeah. You let us know, we'll be there. This time they're going to come out and trip receivers to the right. Albert's all set out of the backfield. Now pressing him. He steps up in the pocket. He's looking, he's looking, he's looking. And he throws it and he's wide open. That's number 13. Ethan Albert. That quarterback took a shot too. He's tough. Dragons didn't get a whole lot of pressure on him. He stepped up in the pocket and then moved to his right, and he found an open receiver in the end zone. That's going to cut the lead to 35-20. And um, Woodfin is in for the extra point. Excellent field goal kicker. It's up. It's good. Dragons lead 35-21, 414 to go in the third quarter. We got a game. Coach, that quarterback is gutsy. He is gutsy. He stood in there. Kept his feet going. And he's just a sophomore. He's really showed a lot of savvy tonight. Well, and he's got a tremendous arm. I, I, 
you just watch him. He brings that he brings that ball right up to his ear, and he's ready to get rid of it. That's a nice play. Nice play. Well, let's see. I can't find anything, Coach. Any updates? Kind of slow today. Well, I tell you, we've got a very enjoyable, exciting game going on here. Dragons lead 35-21. 4-14 to go in the third quarter. At number 32, Grant Woodfin in to kick it off for the Warriors. I wonder if we'll get another little squib kick right here. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. They got twelve guys on the field again. Is anybody looking? They got nope. twelve guys on the field. Didn't count. That was uh, Bryson Hunt taking that squib kick, and he downs it at the thirty-eight yard line. They need to count how many people are out there. They had 12 guys on the field. Well, that's that official right here on the sideline. That's his job to count. Coach, we'll give you some college scores. Tennessee, 24-21 over UK. That's at halftime. Alabama, 21-7 over LSU. Uh, the team up north, 17, Indiana, 7. Dragons are going to come out and twin receivers to the right. With the unbalanced line right. Two backs in the backfield. Zion Martin in front of Brumfield. The hand of Brumfield. He hits it up into four area. And he's got a minimum gain of a couple. Bring it up to the 39. Coach, we'll I guess who that second was? Second down two. That was or, or Joshua Carroll, number 22. Number 22, our, our uh, number change. Joshua Carroll. Uh, he was right on there. Nice job. Read that, filled the hole, did a great job. Dragons come out, twins to the right. Xander Smith in the slot. Two backs on the right side of Jackson. He takes a snap, rolls to the right. He's looking, he's going to turn it up, and he's going to get... About one on the play, and that's going to bring up third down and seven for the Dragons. It's a big down here. Steeler Leap and Bryson Hunt enter the game for the Dragons. Going out is Zion Martin and R.J. Ward. And they're going to abandon the unbalanced line. They have four receivers now. They've got trips to the left. One to the right, Brumfield in the backfield. Jackson takes it, sprints out, and Brumfield, or excuse me, that steal or leap, that ball was thrown a little short and it bounced up. Let's bring up fourth down. The Dragons are going to send in the punting unit. Coach Jackson had a hard time getting his shoulders turned, get that throw. Dragons send in a punting unit and back to punt for the Dragons, Xander Schmidt. They've got their wide right punt formation. There's the snap. Xander takes it. It's a good kick off. And they won't try to return. It's bouncing back up and it's finally downed in there. Dragons need to get a stop here. Need to get a stop. I think that was R.J. Ward down that ball. Yes. Score here really makes things interesting. Ward is going to take over at their own 31-yard line. They come out, twin receivers to the right, wing right with the ends ball set out to the left. Breaks in the shotgun. Take the handoff, he pulls it, 
he's looking to run and he's mowed under. He doesn't get anything there. I believe that's J.D. Brumfield and R.J. Ward on the tackle. Be second down, 10 yards to go. What do you think they're going to do here, Coach? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, if it were me, I'd try to find Mr. Amsball, like you said. He's a playmaker. Well, they got uh, twins to the right, twins to the left. A little wider here on the right. They got an empty they set, Coach. Empty backfield with a wing right. And he drops back. He's looking. He's looking. Uh, he steps up. He's being chased. He throws it, and it's picked off by Bryson Hunt. That throw was a little bit behind, number three, uh, e Elijah Alt. And Hunt stepped in front and picked it off. So the Dragons create another turnover. That's the, at least the third I know of tonight. Yep. And, Coach, I'll be going honest with That's you. I'm watching Worthington. The fourth. Run. I think right. they fumbled, and we've had three interceptions. Yep. He so. scrambled, and then the receivers did the scramble drill. And Hunt did a great job staying with the receiver, and he underthrew and picked it off. Okay. Dragon's going to take over at their own 46. Trip by uh, going back to the unbalanced line to the right with twins to the right and two backs in the backfield. Jackson. He sends Xander Schmidt in motion, gives to Brumfield. He's got room. He's got 10, 15. He's still going, and he's tackled out of bounds by number 45, Tyler White, at the Worthington Christian 27-yard line. Mama, there goes that man. <laughs> <laughs> That's been his best rush of the night, I think. Uh the Dragons first down at the Worthington Christian 28-yard line. Twins to the right, unbalanced to the right. Martin and Brumfield, he's going to send Xander Schmidt again. He fakes it. It's quarterback keep. He turns it up. Got a nice gain of about six yards on the play. Maybe just five. That's a good uh, run by Peyton Jackson. Faked the handoff that time to Brumfield. Kept it. Turned it up around right in. I'll tell you what, Coach, I'd come back and run that same one they did to J.D. a minute ago because you're on the wide side of the field. Try to get him outside again. He's running hard. But I'm going to tell you, where the Christian's done a pretty good job on him. Uh, we got a player down, so we're going to. It's a we're gonna have an official's timeout for uh yeah, it's number seventy seven, Luke 57. Zodi. Seventy seven. Seventy seven is Luke Zodi. Yep. Six one, two hundred and four pound junior offensive lineman. And he was the one that Tim Stevens mentioned that was a pretty good lineman for them. I'm telling you, this team could be back in this position next year. As young oh, as absolutely. As young as they are, absolutely. Absolutely. I think that really most of their skill players, if you look down through the roster, I think most of their skill players are coming back. Right. They're lo Well, we'll take that back. 16, they're losing him, Adam Dunson. But if you look at the skill players, I mean, yeah, that's basically it. They, they can be very good next year. Yes. And I know they're going to be good in basketball. They're very good this year, to tell you the truth. Yes. Right. We've got 105 to go in the third quarter. Dragons leading 35-21. Well, it's been a very exciting high school football playoff game tonight here at Jim Mayo Memorial Stadium. Okay. We've got an update real quick, Coach. Ironton 10, Portsmouth 6, 534 left in the fourth quarter. So that is a good game. Yes, it is. We've got uh, three backs in the backfield this time. Xander Schmidt and Zion Martin are stacked to the right. Brumfield, who sends Schmidt in motion. And he takes a snap. And that play's not going anywhere. Not going anywhere, I don't think. 
My goodness. Man, it's hard to get that young man down. That's going to be a loss on the play. That's a big loss. six or seven. It's a big loss. Yeah, that's uh, – that didn't work out too good. 12 seconds, 11. That's probably going to last be the last play of the third quarter. Yeah, they're going to let it count down to zero. So nah. your score after three quarters of action – here at the Concrete Palace, the Fairland Dragons 35 and the Worthington Christian Warriors 21. Wow. Well, what a game. I know, but it's uh, – Fairland, I feel like Fairland needs to score right here. I really do. I feel it's important right now. It's a big – could be a big swing if we don't. I'm see if, I'll see if I can find any more updates for us. A little slow today. Wheelersburg, 24, Richwood, 10, 11.40 to go oh, in the game. Oh, wow. Wasn't Wheelersburg down earlier? Yes. Uh, Ironton just scored, went up 17 to six. 17 to six. That's a big score right there. Yeah, it is. That'll probably, with how much time's left, three minutes to go, I'd say that's pretty much it. Ironton's probably gonna advance. The Dragons come out, they have trip receivers to the right, one to the left. Jackson in the shotgun alongside him on his right is Brumfield. He's looking. He's throwing deep down the middle. He's got – oh, what? oh, my. I thought he snagged it. Steeler leap. Dove. Got both hands on it but couldn't bring it in. 11.54 to go in the fourth quarter. And the Dragons are going to punt. The ball sitting on the 30 – one yard line. They got a tight punt formation this time. Now they go to the wide. Xander Schmidt takes a snap. Gives a little pooch kick down to the left side. And they keep it out of the end zone. The ball is down around the one. Nice coverage. Nice kick. Xander Smith, a little pooch punt. And the ball is going to be sitting on the, appears to be from up here, the one-yard line, right on the one-yard line. First down, 10 yards to go. Uh, terrific kick there by Xander Smith. Mr. Do-It-All. Now, I think they broke Worthington the huddle with 12 out. right there, Coach. They just broke the huddle with 12. And two backs in back. There's a fumble. Boy, they ran. I think he's called a safety. He's fumbled a snap. When he fell on it, he was in the end zone. So that's going to give the Dragons two points. The Dragons get a safety, and Worthington Christian will have to kick off from the 20-yard line to the Dragons. 37-21. That's an important two points. Absolutely, it that is. turned out a, to be very important. That is a big, big, big play right there. That's huge. The referee on the far side came up and put his hands together and called it a safety. You know why that happened, Coach? Do what? You know why that happened? Why did that happen? Because the quarterbacks never haven't been under center all night. <laughs> <laughs> They're not used to that. Hey, things have changed since you and I coached. No, that's – everything. I guess is, that's antique. <laughs> 
Well, actually, you'll see it in the pros. You don't see it too much in college, and you don't see it too much in high school anymore. Okay, the uh, Warriors got to place the ball down, and their kicker, Grant Woopton, is going to kick off from the 20-yard line to the Dragons. Back deep, Xander Schmidt and Cam Kitts. Cam Kitts is on about his own 35, and Xander is at about his 25. Woodfin approaches, he kicks, and it's another squib kick, and it's taken! Oh, my! Oh. He gone! He gone! He gone! That ball was taken by Bryson Hunt on the fly, and he split the defenders, and there was nobody there. And he takes it in for the score. The Dragons have sailed out to a 43-21 lead with the extra point to come. I've seen that happen before. <laughs> yep. They tried to pooch kick it. Oh, that's a heads-up play. Very I mean, heads-up heads play. I thought, wow, I hope he catches it. <laughs> Not only did he catch it, he caught it on the fly, and he split the defenders and went in for the dragon touchdown. That was Bryson Hunt, number 10. That's a 10. heck of a play by Bryson, heck of a play. He's the holder. The kick is up, and again, it's good. The Dragons take a 44-21 lead. Uh, I just got a message from someone that said, this is the quote. It says, uh, they had leather helmets when you all coached. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that from? Jason Gorby. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, that was a fantastic play by Bryson Hunt. Hey, that was one, one heck of a play. I just that, heads up play. That could be the game winner. I think that safety in that play right there, them choosing to do that momentum swing. Yeah, 11 minutes, 31 seconds to go in the – Ball game, Dragons just got nine quick ones to go up 44-21. What's been a very exciting ball game tonight. It's been a I'm long not going to take nothing away from Worthington Christian. Absolutely they not. Have, uh, they've got some turnovers to really hurt them. But uh, that, that kickoff right there, that could be a backbreaker. And if I was Coach Cunningham, I would not kick this thing deep. Well, Alex Bruce marching off his 10 yards and three yards to his right. It's the whistle. He approaches the ball, and he kicks it deep. Taken over on the left side by number 13. And he's trying to make it around the corner, but he's brought down over there. By is that Spence? Yes, Garrett Spence. No, that's Jack Hayden, number 26. Got him around the, the ankles and brought him down at their 30-yard line. It'll be first down 10 for the Warriors. Jack Hayden. Coach, we've got some. Uh... We've got some new uh, people in here on defense. We've got some some white, some new some new clean jerseys out there. They're trying to give the defensive line a break. I see a couple new ones out there. Dement, Justin McKee, and they've got a. They broke the huddle with 12, legal yep. substitution. I know Jack sent Jack Hayden. I see him in there. I saw another lineman going in there a minute ago. I couldn't see the number. 75 is uh, McKee. Warriors, twins right. Fake the handoff. He drops back, and he's going to be brought down. On the play by number 56, KC Hudson on the sack. And that's going to take it back a little further. It was first and 15. It's going to bring up about second down and all 23 yards to go.
10.40 on the running clock. Dragons leading 44-21. Twins right and left. Brakes drops back and he's got pressure all over. He's going down again. This time it's J.D. Brumfield. Sacks him for another huge loss. And uh, Coach, this is going to be third down in Paddy Creek. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Third Avenue in Huntington. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's heading out toward my house there, and uh, I'm telling you, about third down, 33 yards to go. Twins right, one receiver left, a wing right. He takes a snap, he throws it back to Elijah. Albert, and he's chopped down. And Brumfield's on the stop again for the Dragons. And that's gonna bring up fourth down and Demare Street. Oh wow, 32 yards to go. And they are bringing in the punting unit this time on to punt number 16, Adam Dunson. He's standing in the end zone, right in the middle. Snap is good. They got a flag. I don't know what they've got here. Like all sides. They lined up all sides. All sides are on the offense. Is that going to be half the distance? Yes. I would not want to be punt now the back of that end zone. Well, he's got to back up a little bit now. Let's see if Coach Cunningham comes after it. What do you think? Hmm? Let's see if Coach Cunningham comes after it. What do you think? I don't know. I think they're going to get decent field position no matter what happens here. He punts it. It's high, short. It takes a big bounce. Boy, Steeler really wanted to get his hands on that one. He, did, <laughs> he was gauging it. <laughs> He's wanted to come on, man, give me a good hop. And it took, you know, that's why that ball's got nose on each end. Uh, it took a bounce to the left, and he had to let it go. Definitely get some funny hops with that thing. All right, Dragon's got an excellent field position on the plus side of uh, the 50 at the 33-yard line of the Worthington Christian Warriors. Coach, we've got a couple quick updates. I have to thank Nick Eplin for these. He said West Jeff leads Northmore 63-13 in the fourth, and Fort Fry beat Nelsonville, York 36-6. So it looks like West Jeff and Fort Fry are going to move on. That'll be the Dragons' opponent next week, West Jefferson. They give the ball to Cam Kitts on the jet sweep, and he's gone. That boy has got some wheels. Really nice block on the outside there. I think that was Xander Smith created the lane for Cam Kitts, and Kitts took the jet sweep, turned it up around the left side, and hit pay dirt, and the Dragons have opened this one up 50 to 21. Eight minutes, 41 seconds to go in the ball game. And Alex Bruce on to kick another extra point. I think he's about seven or eight for eight. Seven for seven. And the Dragons lead 51-21. 8-41 to go in the game. I didn't see that coming. No, sir. No. No. I actually thought that Worthington Christian had some momentum there. and uh... Yeah, especially when they answered that score at 35-21 and they got the ball. But let's thought, think uh -oh. about this. We that punt <laughs> that we got that pinned him on the one yard line. Yes. That's that's the game changer right there. Yeah, that created him and none other but Xander Schmidt. I nice mean, we've punt. scored sixteen and, uh, points off of that right there in the last what four minutes? Right. That's uh, yes, sixteen points. Oh my gosh, about three minutes, coach. I think it was, was eleven it, was something it? to go. Okay. I thought about it was four, three but minutes. you can see the clock. I can. It's eight forty to go. I think it was 11-something on the clock when they got the safety. Hi, right, Alex Bruce is going to set it down once again. Going to kick off with the Dragons. Back deep, number 16, Adam Dunson.
This is a good kickoff. Back to about the 10. It's taken in there by Elijah Albert. And he's going to be brought down on the play. And that jacket. Right. Casey Hudson. No, that's 57. 57 is Ryan Dixon on the tackle. Good special teams play by Ryan Dixon. Brings up first down and 10 for the Warriors at the 26-yard line. Warriors come out, two receivers to the left, one to the right. A wing to the right. Rakes takes a snap. He looks. And he steps up in the pocket. Now he side finds it, and it's picked off by Bryson Hunt with his second. Did you see that one? That was a pick. great one-handed. I wish we had replay. Oh my goodness! Wow. Now the folks at home can run it back and watch it. That was a great snag by Bryson Hunt, who's really turned in a great second half performance for the Dragons. Boy, I'm imp that was awesome. I, think I mean, he, he broke a, on that ball I and mean, hit that with one hand. he's had a tremendous second half. Well, he's had the touchdown on the, had on the, the kick, kick the return. The kickoff return for a touchdown. I think he downed that ball down there on the he one. Did. And now he's got his second interception, or is that his third one? That's his second interception tonight. And just a tremendous performance by the young youngster Bryson Hunt. Twins to the right. One receiver left. We got a wing left. They're going to run a tall sweep to Brumfield. And he's not going. Oh, he hits and spins out of it. Now he's got some room down the sideline. And he runs over. Whew. Did you see that Number block by three, Peyton, the quarterback? Elijah Alt. <laughs> Did you see that, the block by Peyton Jackson? Yes. Peyton Jackson <laughs> downfield. <laughs> sealed the sideline off for Hunt. Or, uh, excuse me, Brumfield. And... Brumfield just kind of bowled over Mr. Alt. That's going to be enough for first down. The Dragons move it down to the 21. First down and 10, six minutes, 54 seconds on a running clock. Schmidt, leap, go left. Cam Kitts to the right. Two backs in the backfield. Fakes to Brumfield. He throws it right wide down open. the middle, wide open to Zion Martin on the catch, right down the middle. Peyton Jackson lays it in there. Easy throw and catch. And the Dragons go up 57 to 21. Woo! I bet Tim Stevens is, is uh, pretty busy over there. Well, I don't know. <laughs> you know what? I would love to know how many yards passing Peyton Jackson has. Oh, my. He's got a bunch. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. If this kick, I'm going to Go step ahead. over here and see if he has any the ideas. holds down, the kick is up, and it's true again. And, and uh, somebody just ripped Cooper Cummings' helmet off. He's standing out there with his arms out to his side, saying, hey, what's going on here? But, uh, the Dragons now... Opened it up, 58-21. Six minutes, 36 seconds to go in the game. And uh, they're really pouring it on now. Dave Carroll will be back in a moment. He went over to check out some uh, stats. We're going to try to get some numbers on Peyton Jackson's passing yardage. Dragon's been very opportunistic tonight on the turnovers that they've created. You got some news for me there, Coach? Here's the kick. It's deep. 
And it's going to number 13. He's still going. And they're going to finally whistle him dead at around the 33-yard line. They said Peyton has thrown for 239 yards. Um, Tim, Tim said 239 yards 200. is what he had so far. 39. But that was just a very, very quick adding. So it could be more. But I figured around 250. Well, the Dragons have got uh, a pick six, a safety, a kickoff return. Uh, they've created a lot of points with their defense. The uh, Dragons send in several younger players now. C.J. Graham's in the game. Just about everybody out there is... They give the ball to number 45. That's Tyler White on the carry. Garrett Spence, nice job. Who is that? Was Garrett it? Spence. Garrett Spence on the tackle for a one-yard loss. And move the ball back to the 32. And bring up second down 11 for the Warriors. I'll give a quick shout out to Khalil and Chastity. They're listening tonight and watching watching us on YouTube. We like hearing from all of you. Oh, I got to say hello to Tricia, Lonnie Watts. Uh -huh. They always yell at me when I, I take a little break. Now we've got delay a game on the Warriors. That's going to back them up five more. It's going to be second down and 16 to go. Ball at the 21-yard line, 26-yard 20, line. Twins to the right. One receiver left with the wing left. Rakes is back. He's looking. He's looking. And now he throws it downfield and it over, over the head of number 16. That's Adam Dunson. You notice how he side arms the ball? And, yep. I mean, he he lets her fly. Hobie Rake's going to be a really good quarterback. He is. He's already a good quarterback. Jason Gorby? Yep. Thank you, Jason Gorby. Glad you're watching. If you guys at home have not hit the subscribe button, please do that for us. We have about 450, and we need 1,000. So tell your friends, and neighbors, All family, right. subscribe Twins. to Fairland IT channel. Twins left. Rakes scrambling. He lets it fly. He's got an open receiver out there. And he's brought down by Lucas Bumpus, number four, for the Dragons. That pass is complete to number 13, Ethan Albert. And that's good for a first down. Worthington Christian has not quit. No. They're still out to play. I think uh, we're going to hear the coaches over the, the next uh, cubicle. I think they're trying to get some, some kind of yardage for Mr. Rakes because they're yelling out 209. He's got about 209 passing. Well, he's done a good I mean, he really has done a good job tonight. Yes, he does. He's looking again. Dragon's putting pressure on, he side arms it, but it goes behind Adam Johnson. And it falls incomplete to bring up second down, 10 yards to go. Ball at the Fairland Dragons, 31 yard line. Two minutes, 14 seconds to go in the ball game. Dragons leading 58 to 21. And folks, we hope we get to call the game next week. Uh, well, Coach, if they say, hey, we, we're going to do the game, we, we'll be there. Well, depending on where it's at, we may have to go and get dinner early. <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, I'm down with that, as they say today. <laughs> Twins to the right. One receiver left. Rakes takes the snap. He's being pressured. He steps up, lets it go deep, and it's going to be caught by number 13, <laughs> Ethan Albert, <laughs> down inside the five-yard line. Or right at the five-yard line. And that was a good coverage by number seven for us. 
That's yeah, Christian Collins. That was great back. coverage. Kid just went and got the ball. Good job. Christian Collins uh, on the tackle. Christian Collins. Six foot, 150 pound sophomore. Dragons have their second unit defense in. And Worthington Christian has not stopped. They're still playing hard. Twins right. One receiver left. He fakes, or he hands to 45, and he's going to end for the score. Number 45, Tyler White, takes the handoff. He broke one tackle and cruised on into the end zone. So that's going to make the score 58-27 with the extra point coming up. Number 32, Grant Woodfin in. Or they're going to go for two. I don't know. No, well, Coach, they're, no, 40, they're kicking the extra point. 49 seconds left. I don't think there's – it's a done deal. I think you just – Oh, yeah. Kick it and play and – Sure. I think the Dragons probably ought to kneel a couple times here after the kickoff. Yep. Hey, guys. Good job, guys. Great season. It's the coaches from next door. Super, super nice fellas. Uh, I'm going to tell you, the last two or three we've had in here, those guys from Buckeye Trail, class act. That's right. This These guys here, were too. Class act. That's true. Uh, Very. And we've had some in here, but we, we just soon had a door. <laughs> there were some that we needed a door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there's 49 seconds to go in the game. Dragons lead 58-28. And Worthington Christian, they get ready to kick off. Well, Coach, let's uh, take a little chance or take a little time here and let's tell all these people from Worthington Christian to have a daggone safe trip back up toward Columbus. Absolutely. It's going to be a while before they get home, so. Yeah. Stop feeding them boys somewhere. <laughs> you know where I'd like to eat? The river. The river. Oh, oh man, I haven't been there for a while. I'd like to go One, get my two, big three, juicy four, five, six, seven, Whoop. eight, nine, ten, eleven. Dragon's kind of expecting maybe an onside kick. That would be a bad time to do it. I mean, I know the game is over, but uh, you can work on some things here. Might be a time in the future that you need an onside kick. Let's see what they do. Woodpin, and he onside kick, and it's free. And I think that I don't know if the Dragons got. I think, I think the they got, got it. it. Did they get it? No, that's number nine, Gavin Davis. So we did corral okay. the ball, and that should be it. Dragon's going to go out and uh, probably just kneel on the ball. You know, keep anybody from getting injured. The game's over. Coach, we got a big game next week. Wheelersburg beats Ridgewood. Means the rematch versus the Fighting Tigers is on. That'll be interesting. I assume that must be next week. Dragons come out. Twins right. They're in the shotgun. We don't go under center, Coach. And Jackson kneels down. And that is going to be the ball game. 11, 10 seconds to go. They're lining up. And shaking hands on the 50-yard line. I'm telling you. Uh, well called game, too, out of the officials. Let's give them props. That's true. The officials called a great game. And... Worthington Christian is a very worthy opponent. Uh, very well coached, very disciplined, young very team poised. Young has got a bright future. Coach Harding is doing it the right way. And uh, I feel like we're probably going to see this bunch again next year somewhere. I think they will. And guess what? They're going to be starting basketball on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> now, I think the there's Dragons a I think won there's a their second playoff game. This year, and they're going to move on and meet West Jefferson. West Jefferson down, uh, who was it? Uh, Northmore. Northmore. 
and uh, they had a sizable lead. And uh, Dragons are going down in the end zone to celebrate with the student body and uh, sing the alma mater. Hortis and Christian headed to the other end zone. And I tell you, I want to thank Doug Morse and Charlie Dennison. I know we didn't even hit them at the beginning of the broadcast. What's wrong with us? Are we getting old? <laughs> Forgetful? I think. I think. <laughs> I don't know if we mentioned it or not, but we can't do this without them. They Absolutely set every, everything for us, and and uh, they make it all possible. And uh, we thank them. And hopefully, hopefully we'll be back again next week to do the game. Lord willing, if we can go. If well, not, I, I guess we'll see we'll people in basketball. If not, we'll be watching. <laughs> That's true. But. Uh, that's your final here at uh, Jim Mayo Memorial Stadium. The Fairland Dragons, 58, and the Worthington Christian Warriors, 28, and a very exciting high school playoff football game. So we're going to sign off and uh, say uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We've, we uh, enjoy doing this, and we're, we're just so glad that uh, we're able to bring you this game. So... Uh, that's going to be it from the Concrete Palace. Jack Harris and Dave Carroll. Good night, everyone. Good night. <laughs>